Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Good morning. Oh, it's chilly in here. It we It's probably they adjusted it. We'll need to call them and tell them to bump it up a little. Yeah, I just know that sure the weather changed. Better with the people coming? No, it's, yeah. I would find out what the temperature said. At. It's cold. Yeah. It's definitely like an ice box in here. All right, good morning, everyone. Court will call State of Wisconsin versus Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please. Yes, good morning, Judge Schuepper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichel appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Okay, good morning, sir. Your name for the record, please. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. All right, the record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody in street clothes. He is wearing a suit, I believe a tie, can't quite see around the monitor, and a mask. Your objections noted for the record. The appearance, as I've just indicated, stands. Um, I do want to advise the parties uh, today that uh, one of the jurors called in this morning and was not feeling well, and I did excuse that juror. So uh, that will mean at the appropriate time um, when the court selects the alternates by random lot, uh, I will only be selecting three. I believe that was juror number 35. All right, uh, anything uh, preliminary before the jury's brought out for the continuation of testimony from the state? Uh, is the audio on, Your Honor? This, uh, no. no. Okay, thank you. All right, sorry uh, about that. The only thing uh, housekeeping to clean up, Your Honor, is Exhibit 15, which was uh, the victim map that we had first introduced through Detective Casey and uh, you admitted it subject to uh, proof of all of the events that are depicted on the map. We believe we have now um, reached that point where it can be admitted in full. I do have a poster sized copy of that exhibit that's also marked as Exhibit 15. So we have Exhibit 1 is the uh, map of the downtown area Exhibit 15 is the uh, what we have termed the victim map or the parade um, victim map. That's uh, a hard copy of that as well. And then I have a third one that I'll be introducing uh, later today or tomorrow. Uh, but we just wanted to clear up on 15 that uh, all of the information on that map has now been testified to, Your Honor. Um, I did admit it subject to uh, the full foundation. Um, any position on that, sir? Uh, to it being a, to it being admitted. Yes, fully received. I had received it subject to foundation, uh, and the states set forth its position. Do you have any position on that? Yeah, I object. I object to it. I don't see the relevancy. All right, your objection is noted, uh, and Exhibit 15 uh, is received. Um, I believe I told the jury it was received subject to that foundation, but I will advise them that it's been received by the court when they come out today. All right, and then uh, one other housekeeping matter. Last week, I believe it may have even been on Thursday, we had a discussion with Mr. Brooks outside the presence of the jury in which several broad topics were discussed. One of them was Mr. Brooks had indicated he did not have a pretrial offer from the state. Uh, we would ask the record to reflect uh, that afternoon we did provide him again with a written copy of our pretrial offer and that was placed with his materials on the table. I just wanted that in the record, please. 
Uh, I object to that. I don't. Uh, if it was with my paperwork, I have. I haven't seen it. It was specifically one of the papers, sir, that you left in the bullpen area that on the next morning, on Friday morning, I made a record of providing back to you. So it was provided to you twice. Well, I haven't seen it. You want yeah. to put the offer on the record, Attorney yes. Albert? Give me one second, Your Honor. So what's the significance of it being on the record? If, um... okay. So that you are fully aware of it, sir. It was provided to you, um, but... Uh, you're indicating you haven't read it, so I want them to make a record of it. The significance would be, I suppose, if at any point you wanted to change your plea, you could do that based upon the pretrial offer. Well, in any event, I accept for value and return for value that document whenever I'm, whenever I see it. Attorney Upper, go ahead. Sorry, it's just taking me a second to retrieve it here, Your Honor. Your Honor, this would be a perfect time to address the subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to be proven on the record and must be Mr. proven Brooks, by the prosecution. I issued, we are not going to address it. I issued a written decision last week. If you disagree with that, then you can take that up to a higher court. But I issued a written decision. I'm not addressing that any further. It has yet to be proven on record. Mr. Brooks, my written decision is the decision of this court. Has it, been opera, proven, go ahead. has it been proven on record that you have subject matter jurisdiction? Because it has yet to be proven. Mr. Brooks, your position is simply not correct as a matter of law. I explained that. You prove it lawfully and I by the law. Decision. You might be confusing subject matter jurisdiction with venue, which is why I commented on that last week. Absolutely and There not. has been evidence received regarding venue. So I'm going to turn back to Attorney Abbott. She's going to, to, to make a venue, record Your of Honor. the pretrial offer. I'd ask that you not interrupt. Thank you. Your Honor, the offer that was dated July 5 of 2022 reads as follows. Plead to counts 1 through 67 in the information. The penalty enhancers on all counts will be struck. Counts 68 to 83 will be dismissed and read in. The state will recommend six consecutive life sentences on counts 1 through 6. The state will recommend unspecified prison on all other counts. The defense is free to argue. This pretrial offer was conveyed to his prior counsel on or about the July 5th date. And there in fact had been a earlier offer as well that had been relayed uh, prior to the preliminary hearing or the filing of the information back in January of 2022 that had also been uh, conveyed to his defense counsel at the time. All right, thank you. So why haven't I been informed of that? All right, Mr. Brooks, um, that is not a topic we are going to take up um, any further. I just wanted the record to reflect uh, that that offer was conveyed to you. It wasn't conveyed um, to me, Your Honor. This is um, the first time I'm hearing of it. So if it was con conveyed to my former it's counsel. Not something I'm going to... Uh, it's not something I'm going to further address, sir, unless you indicate to me that you would like to take advantage of the pretrial offer by uh, changing your pleas to either guilty or no contest to counts one through 67 and uh, submit the appropriate paperwork. I'm guessing that's not what you want to do. Uh, so unless that paperwork were to be filed, then I'm going to continue with this trial as if you are exercising your right to a trial in this matter. And in all respect, Your Honor, I don't think it's fair that you should assume what I want to do or not, or what I don't want to do. Um, I just need to make a record that that paperwork was provided, sir. We'll continue with the uh, testimony today. Um, I'm not going to take up subject matter jurisdiction. I've issued a written decision. Is there any other preliminary topic from either party? Yeah. Is, that this, is that decision uh, verified proof that subject matter jurisdiction exists because it has yet to be proven on the record. All right, your objection is noted. Um, please bring the jury out. Your Honor, is that the answer? Mr. Brooks, I issued a written decision. That's and, your answer. And, what's that, and what is the written decision in entail? So that was provided to you last week. I'm not going to go through I accept for value and return for value the document that I have not seen. What does it entail, Your Honor? 
Uh, sir, you were provided with a written copy. I'm not going to read it into the record at this point. It is part of the record. It's a final order. If for it's purposes part of the of record, appeal. why can't it be read into the record right now? Um, it doesn't need to be read into the record. Sir. Is it verified proof of, of Is it verified proof of subject matter? Mr. Brooks, I'm not answering that because that's not something that needs to be verified. Your it it, did, it, it has to be verified right. by the prosecution. Right? Or is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer that question or verify proof of subject matter jurisdiction? Sir, I have no such agreement with you, uh, tacit or otherwise. So um, that's not how this operates. Again, just so because would it be proven? the law requires, that doesn't make it true. All right, so show me lawfully out. law. For the jury, please. Show me by lawfully law that you have subject matter jurisdiction because it hasn't been proven on the record. <laughs> has yet to be proven for the record. Let the record reflect that. Um, the record will not reflect that, and the jury will disregard the comments currently being made. The record should reflect that. Mr. Brooks. You have to put it on the record. Otherwise, that would be tampering with the record. So at 840. All right. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Attack at agreement at 840. Uh, all right. Please disregard the most recent comment Tacit by Mr. Brooks. It's not evidence in this proceeding. Um, all right. The statement call its next witness. Thank you, Judge. The state calls Sean Backler. No subject matter jurisdiction. Jury will disregard that last statement by Mr. Brooks. Has to be on the record. Good morning, sir. Please make your way to the witness stand, which is all the way up by me, to my right. When you get there, uh, please remain standing, raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. There is one riser, so just be mindful of that. <coughs> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you, sir. Please be seated. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Sean Backler, S-E-A-N, last name, B-A-C-K-L-E-R. All right, go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Backler. Hi. Sir, uh, on November 21 of 2021, where did you live? Over the You may answer, sir. Uh, 409 Central Avenue, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Okay, if you could just keep your voice up a little bit, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's maybe better if you scoot a little closer to the microphone. Okay, okay 409 Central Avenue, and that's in the city of Waukesha? Correct. Okay. Around the uh, time of 4.49 p.m. on that afternoon of November 21, 21, where were you? Over you may answer, sir. I was outside uh, working around the yard had my garage open. Okay. Were you aware that the annual Christmas parade was going on that afternoon? I was aware of it, yes. Did you attend the parade, sir? No, I didn't. Okay. Overruled. Around 449 p.m., what happened, sir? Objection. Leading the witness. Um, overruled. I heard some noise around the, on the east side of my garage, and uh, I went to see what was going on. And, I found the defendant uh, on the side of my garage. I asked him, what in the f in hell is he doing? <laughs> okay, so let's, let's slow down a little bit. Uh, you heard a noise and you went to explore it, correct? Correct. And you saw a person there? Yes, I did. And you questioned that person for being there, is that right? Objection uh, leading the witness. Um, Foundational, Yannis. Uh, overruled. Uh, his, I, you can answer. I'm not sure if you did or not. <laughs> I, I, I asked him what, what he was doing there. Okay. And uh, maybe you were cursing at him? Is that what you're suggesting? Objection. I, the witness. Overruled. I think I dropped an F bomb on him. Why? Objection. He's trespassing. Okay. The person Sorry, that you. wasn't objecting, but it's overruled. The person that you saw, can you give us a description of that person, please? Um, when I called it in on the non-emergency line at the Waukesha Police Department, I described him 
at, at about about uh, five foot eight, probably weighed about 150 pounds. Uh, he was either black mixed or Latino male, wearing a red shirt, jeans, uh, long hair, beard, and uh, I think he was missing his shoes. Okay. Um, did you you said a red top? Red shirt. Red shirt. What kind of shirt? Um, overruled, then his answer may stand. He was wearing a red jean. If there is an objection, please just wait until I rule on it first by saying either uh, overruled or sustained, and I'll let you know if you can answer the question. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Uh, I believe it was a red t-shirt. Okay. Uh, to your way of thinking, was he dressed appropriately for the weather? Objection. Uh, Lee Overruled. You may Relevancy. Answer. Objection. Overruled. Um, immediately, it it just seemed off because he was wearing a t-shirt. I, if I remember correctly, he was not wearing shoes. He was. It was very cold out. He was uh, sweating. His eyes were huge, and uh, he was just acting. He was, when he came out from the garage, he, he was asking if I could call him an Uber. Okay. So you spoke with him a little bit? Objection leading. Um, sustain this to the form of the question, please rephrase. Very, no, very I, shortly. I have to ask him a question. Rephrase oh, question. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Did you speak with him? A little bit. Okay. What do you remember him saying? Um, he kept asking if I could call him an Uber, and then he said I need to get home. Did you agree to call an Uber for him? No, I said he needed to leave my yard. Okay. And did he comply with that? Yeah, he, he did. He uh, just kept asking, if again, if I could call him an Uber, if he could use my phone. He said, you just need to leave. And... Uh, person that you're describing for us, sir, do you see him present in the courtroom here? He's sitting over there with the mask on and in the suit. Okay, I'm going to ask the defendant be instructed to remove the mask. Mr. Brooks, And if he would look at the witness, please, Your Honor, with his head down, it's not to assist him. Right, Mr. Brooks, please uh, look up and look at the witness. Look at the witness, please. Thank you. Is that the man that you're describing that was in your backyard that you spoke to? Objection. Yes. Leading. Um, overruled. I want to uh, show you a photograph. It's going to come up on that screen there next to you, okay? <coughs> Just let me know when it's up. The system takes a minute to warm up, especially first thing in the morning. Is it up? Yep, it is. Okay. Do you see uh, this photograph, sir? Objection. And overall. Yes. I like you. Is there a person shown in the photograph? It's Objection. the defendant. Leading. Um, overruled. It's not leading. You may answer. It's the defendant. Is this consistent with his appearance when he presented himself to you on your uh, driveway that evening or uh, backyard garage area? Objection, leading. Overruled, do may answer. It, it is consistent. Okay. Uh, move to admit and permission to publish 171, Your Honor. Objection, relevancy. Uh, your objection is overruled. Exhibit 171 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The jurors will also let us know when the image is projected in the jury box. And sir, it's a little hard to tell in the photograph, but was the t-shirt he was wearing a short sleeve or long sleeve, if you remember? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. It was a short sleeve shirt. Okay. Ultimately, did he leave your property? Objection, he accident, answer. Okay. Uh, when he was leaving, he was kind of taking his time, and then I told him he needs to leave again and started walking towards him as he was leaving, and he lifted his shirt up, 
and said he was unarmed. Okay. Had you asked him about any weapons? I had no. relevancy. I had not asked. When he left your property, did you see which direction he headed? He was going uh, north, uh, northwest. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. All right, sir. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do, and I object to being called that name for the record. Um, do you recall giving a statement to an officer, Probst? I don't know his name, but I, I've talked to an officer. And you, you did talk to an officer that, that night? I talked to an officer on the phone. I did not talk to an officer that night. I mean, on the phone I did, but not in person. So it was uh, a conversation on the non-emergency uh, line. Would that be fair to say? It was on the non-emergency line. Line. I actually uh, confirmed it after I called to make sure I was on the non-emergency line. Do you recall the description that you gave at that time? I do. Well, my best best of my knowledge was that uh, you were either black, Latino, who's you, or mix. Who's you? Well, you have to let him answer the question first before you interrupt him with another one. Go ahead with the description you provided that night. I said that the individual was either black, mixed, or Latino. So it would be fair to say you didn't know at the time? I was giving a general description. So it would be fair to say that you weren't sure? I was positive that... I was positive it was you. Who was you? You. I'm looking at you. And how did you come to that conclusion, the, the you conclusion? I'm looking at you. How did, you come, how did you come to that conclusion? Did you... What conclusion? Because you, can you restate the question? You're saying, you're saying that you gave an, a description on the non-emergency phone line, correct? It was on a non-emergency line. So it would be fair to say at that time you had no name or knowledge of who uh, the person was in your backyard. Would that be fair to say? I had no idea who you were. And so how can you say who, the, how can you say you then if you had no idea? I'm looking at you, you are the guy. And how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, where you and you? I were standing in the same yard looking at each other. So is it possible you saw something on the news? No, I had no idea who you were. Interesting. Do you recall giving a description of approximately 5 feet 9 and 160 pounds? I, it, it, yeah, it's something like that. Something like that, or would that be accurate? I didn't have a tape measure out. It was just a guesstimate. Would it be fair to say that since you keep identifying me as you, would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9 nor 160 pounds? Do you have your shoes on or off right now? Would it be you, fair to you, say that I'm not 5'9 and 160 pounds? If you take your shoes off and step out of them, they could have a better... Well, I'm not better have them do that, but if you're able to answer the question... Uh, do you agree I'd have to be standing next to him. That's what I made my judgment from. We were about two does feet it, from each other. Does it look like I'm five foot nine? I don't know. We were a lot closer. Does it look like I'm 160 pounds? Objection. Grounds. It's irrelevant as to his appearance today, just like his hair isn't in dreadlocks today. <coughs> Objection. Question. Grounds for the sustain. Last question, please. You also said that, well, the narrative in the report, it 
said that the, the individual was later identified. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that'd be fair to say. And so would it also be fair to say that because the uh, the individual was identified later, that that's how you came to the conclusion of who it may have been in your yard? Objection, I think that's Grounds. a statement. Your Honor, he's, again, reading a police report. That's that's a question. Not authored by this witness. It's beyond the scope of the witness's knowledge. It's actually it's, the report that Mr. he Rose, gave. I've heard enough. If the objection is sustained, you may rephrase your question. Did you follow the investigation after you had given the uh, the report on the non-emergency line? It's kind of hard not to see it on TV. Can I can I clarify something? Or? Um, there's not a question just oh, yet, okay. so right. the state will have an opportunity to redirect if they deem it appropriate. Okay. Thank you. So you, you made reference to it was kind of hard not to see it on the news. Would that be fair to say? It was all over the news. And would it be fair to say that from those news reports you gained additional information that you didn't have that night? Actually, what I did is went into work the next morning and pulled up the police report on, on the Internet. And there you were in a so, shot. And I'm like, that's the guy. So you got a further description from a mugshot? No, I didn't get a further description. At the time, I didn't care who you were when you were in my yard. I didn't know who you were, what you had done, where you had been, any of so, that stuff. So all I'm, all, all I'm saying is you were trespassing in my yard at that time. And that's all I can say. Other than that, that's all, I'm, that's all I can confirm. I don't know what you did. I don't know where you were. I don't know any of the other stuff. All I know is you were the guy in my yard. The guy that you said was five foot nine, 160 pounds. Objection, argument, and an answer. Grounds. Sustained. Next question, you don't have to answer that. And what prompted you to read the, or pull up the police report? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds, he, he said it, he brought it out here. Um, overruled, he may answer. I was curious of actually who you were and, and what, if you were the person that actually had done the atrocities that were on tel television. And what prompted the, the curiosity? A uh, stranger was in my yard, unannounced, trespassing, asked him to leave, and they ended up catching somebody for doing something very bad. And I was wondering if that was the individual that had cut through my yard. So it would be fair to say at the time you wasn't privy to that knowledge yet? Judge I had grounds. Oh, sustained us to the form of the question. At the time you pulled up the police report, as you say, you, you had no knowledge of the identity of the individual. I didn't know that you were going to be the person that had done that. You keep referring to the you. You. I'm looking into your eyes right now. You're the, the guy I'm talking about when I refer to you. And the record should reflect that uh, the witness used his right hand and index finger to point directly at uh, the defendant. Next question, please.
So you just made reference to looking the you in the eyes, but you would need. What would you prefer to call you? You would need. Because you're not going by Daryl Bros. You would need me to step out of my shoes to tell my height and weight, right? Well, I'd have to also stand two feet hold from on, you. Hold on, hold okay. on, please. Um, the, Mr. Brooks, you're directed under 90611 to ask a question and not argue with the witness. That, that Thank was you. A question. It was argumentative. Now, please rephrase your question. And then the witness is instructed to wait until a question is asked. And if there's any objection, then I rule on it first. Go ahead, next question. It sounds like he didn't want to argue. Jerry will disregard that last comment. Mr. Brooks, you're not testifying right now. You'll have an opportunity if you cho choose to do that later. Please ask a question. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to you. Any reason why you didn't give a, a, a written statement to law enforcement? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Irrelevant. Positive. Argumentative. Sustained. As to the form of the question. Next question, please. Did you at any time give a written statement to law enforcement? I don't believe so. Any reason why not? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. and Irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds, Grounds for the sustain. Mr. Brooks, please ask your next question. Grounds for the sustain. You said you pulled up the uh, police report at work the next day, right? No, I pulled up your mugshot. Well, you did say police report. Would that be fair to say? I just pulled up a mugshot. You don't recall saying that you pulled up the police report specifically? I specifically wanted to pull up the picture of the person in it had committed those atrocities to see if that was the person that had cut through my yard, which confirmed it was. And did you pull up the complaint? No. Have you ever seen the complaint? I don't believe I have. Have you yourself filed a complaint? Nope. Any reason why not? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Sustained. As to the form of the question and on relevance. Next question. Do you recall who subpoenaed you to testify here today? Uh, it's on the subpoena. You don't recall? I'd have to have the subpoena with me to read the name. Do you recall if it was the district attorney's office? It or? was. Do you recall about how long you received, how long ago you received the subpoena? You can answer that. A uh, month or two ago, a couple months ago, I didn't. I got a subpoena, so that's all I know, and I had to show up at a certain time. So you knew it was a possibility that you would be called to testify? I had no expectation of the subpoena until I went to the DA's office. So you went to the DA's office? They want to know. They, they ask. <clears throat> they
they want to see if, if, if you're worth having as a witness or if you actually had any information that was pertinent to the case. And so would it be fair to say that you felt that you did? Yeah. I didn't know. Grounds. Well, um, I'll sustain as to the form of the question that strike the last response. Please rephrase. Did you feel that you had uh, information that would be relevant to the matter? That's an irrelevant question, Grounds. Your Honor. Sustained. Next question, please. Grounds for, for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? <coughs> Ask your next question, please. When you went to the uh, district attorney's office, do you recall whom you spoke with? Um, there was three or four people there. Um, I don't recall. Recall their names, I recall their faces. You said you do recall the names, not the faces? No, I recall their faces, not their names. Oh. Do you see any of those district attorneys in court here today? I see one district attorney and uh, one officer was in the room. And for the record and for the jury, can you identify whom you you're referring to? I'd have to point. Um, the <laughs> I'll her, see you yep. later, Your Honor. I met and with Mr. The, And this officer here, sitting behind them. All right, so the yes, witness detective. has pointed to uh, District Attorney Sue Upper and uh, Detective Casey. And that was around the time you first received the subpoena? It was the time that the subpoena told me to show up. Do you recall ever? Uh, do you recall ever being told about the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, vague. Sustained as to the form of the question. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Vague beyond Grounds. the scope of the witness's knowledge. Legally inaccurate. Sustained as to the form of the question. Did Attorney Opper ever tell you who the plaintiff was in this matter? The subpoena told me who the plaintiff was. And do you recall who the plaintiff is? Daryl Brooks. It, that's the plaintiff? Or not the plaintiff, the, the plaintiff is, I think, City of Waukesha or State of Wisconsin, I'm not sure. And it'd be fair to say that that's not a living, breathing human being. Objection. Relevance. Sustained. Not relevant. Next question. Are you aware that only a living, breathing human being can make a claim? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Argumentative. Grounds. Uh, sustained for those reasons, and it's also not an accurate statement. It's definitely not. Definitely not That's argumentative. Right. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, I need you to move on from this topic and ask a different line of questions, please. Is, 
move on from what topic you're on? Next question, sir. Can I know what topic you're referring to, Your Honor? Next question, please. If I don't know the topic, how would I know to go in a different direction? Mr. Brooks, on 90611, I need you to ask a question. Do you know if there's even a plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Miles. Sustained. Under 90611, sir, please move on from this topic or I will declare your cross-examination closed. Under what law in fact, Your Honor? Under 90611, please ask a question. And where can I find 90611? This is your last opportunity to ask a question, sir. Your Honor, the jury deserves to know this information. All right, uh, then, uh, the state, any redirect? No redirect, thank you, Judge. All right, thank you, sir, you may step down. State may call its next witness. You may call. The state calls Dominic Caprone. All right, sir, if you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right, up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Dominic Caprun, D-O-M-A-N-I-C-C-A-P-R-O-O-N. All right, thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Mr. Caprun, are you a resident of the city of Waukesha? Yes. Where were you living on November 21st of 2021? 417 Central, Central Avenue. Avenue. Um, the objection is overruled. His answer may stand. When there's an objection, if you would just wait until I rule on it before you answer. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. 417 Central Avenue, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Okay. Were you home on the afternoon of November 21st, that Sunday afternoon? Yes. Overruled. His answer may stand. What was the answer? Yes. I believe is what he said. Yes. Can you tell us what happened shortly before 5 o'clock p.m. that day? Well, um, we were at home and uh, my youngest son just got home from a friend's house and uh, we were um, uh, ready to get um, water from uh, Woodman's and uh, we... Uh, um, were you outside or inside? We were inside the house, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Did you at some point make your way outside? Um, yeah, um, we eventually decided to go and uh, uh, we were bringing the jugs out to the truck and, um, sorry. It's okay. Tell us about the setup. Where was your truck parked? Um, my truck was parked uh, by the back door and the tailgate was facing the entry of the driveway. So you were, the truck was in the driveway? Yes. Okay. And what happened is you were also standing in the driveway? Um, when I was, I was putting the, the jugs in the uh, back of the truck, um, my son, my oldest son, uh, looked up and he kind of pointed behind me and I went to turn and uh, uh, Mr. Brooks uh, 
was um, coming up the driveway and uh, when I turned um, he uh, kind of stopped and I noticed that he wasn't wearing a jacket or shoes um, just Could you tell us what he was wearing he was he wearing uh, um, overall he may answer okay um, he was uh, wearing just a blue jeans and like a red t-shirt and uh, he had lifted his shirt and did a 360 and told me that he didn't have any weapons and uh, that he needed a phone to call an Uber and so um, I said yeah sure no problem so you know I handed him my phone and uh, I had suggested to him that my neighbor was uh, a Lyft driver and uh, so we continued to, you know, with the containers. And uh, so I put the last one in and he handed me my phone and um, he uh, turned the corner and uh, just wanted to see if he, you know, got a hold of my neighbors, looked around the corner and then and, and he, was, he was gone. So. When Mr. Brooks lifted his shirt and did a 360 and said he was unarmed, were those the first words he said to you while you were in your driveway? Objection leading in and I do not consent to being called that name. Um, overruled. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I think it was more or less all together. Okay. And how many of your sons were present? And in the driveway with you. Objection relevancy. Overruled. Um, two. How old were they at the time? Objection relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. Um, one was uh, 21 and the other one was uh, 14. Do you recall providing a physical description of this, of Mr. Brooks, the person you've referred to as Mr. Brooks today? Um, back on November 21st when you met with the police? Objection. I did not consent to being called that name. Mr. Brooks, that's not a valid objection at this time. Um, go ahead, you may I answer. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, yes, uh, uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? <laughs> back on November 21st when you met with the police, did you provide a physical description of the man who came up your driveway? Yes. Objection, rather me see. Overruled. What was the physical description you provided? Um, it was a black male, um, mid-30s at the time, um, dreadlocks, uh, tied up in a band, he had uh, tattoos. One I noticed uh, above his right eye, um, and some he had on his arms, but it was kind of dark yet, so then it So the darkness prevented you from being able to see any detail of the yeah. arm tattoos? Yes. Yeah. Objection yeah. leading. Overruled. Your Honor, could you please instruct Mr. Brooks to remove his mask momentarily? Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask and look at the witness. Mr. Caprone, the person you've described today is walking up your driveway, the person who you've referred to as Mr. Brooks today. Do you see that person in the courtroom today? Objection. Yes. Leading. Overruled. You may <coughs> answer, sir. To be in court that name, either. Yes. Could you please point to him and then tell us what he's wearing? He's wearing a suit and tie. What the mask? Your Honor, let the record reflect, please, that the witness has identified the defendant. The record will so reflect. And that he pointed with his right hand towards Mr. Brooks. Oh, thank you for that. Objection, I don't consent to being caught that name. For the record. Whose phone, you described handing a phone to Mr. Brooks. Whose phone was it? Objection, I don't consent to being caught that name. Your objection is noted, although it's not legally relevant at this time and I'd ask that you not interrupt 
with an objection for that reason under 906.11. Go ahead, Attorney Wichel, your question again. I don't know that name. Whose phone was it that you handed to the man in your driveway? That was my phone. And did you see what that man did with the phone? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. He called a number on the phone, or called somebody, which I at the time thought was Uber. Did that man then hand the phone back to you at some point? Yes. When you met with the police, did they ask to see your phone? Yes. And the purpose of that was to try and see the number that Mr. Brooks had called? Objection. Overruled. No consent to me to call that name. Yes. Can we please show for the witness only exhibit number 74, a photograph? Go ahead. Objection, Brother Vesey. Overruled. Grounds. It's relevant. Mr. Caprone, do you see a photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. What are we looking at here? This is the number that Mr. Brooks had called. Can you read that number out loud for us? Objection, Brother Vesey. Overruled. 414-610-2153. And this is a call history screenshot, is that right, where we can see all the recent calls to and from that number? Yes. Is this an accurate depiction of how your phone screen looked that afternoon as you showed it to the police? Objection, leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. I move exhibit 74 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Objection, Brother Vesey. Exhibit 74 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The objection is overruled. Can you zoom in on the bottom half of this photograph? Okay, Mr. Caprone, did you call this number at any point? Objection, leading. Overruled. He may answer. No. So all three of these calls, outgoing, incoming, and canceled, would have been made by someone other than you? Yes. Objection, leading. And the only person who had your phone during that time frame was who? Objection, leading. Overruled. Or Mr. Brooks. After Mr. Brooks handed you your phone back, what happened next? A lady had called me, and I answered the phone, and I asked her if she was an Uber, and she told me she was an Uber. Did she say anything else? Objection, leading. Overruled. No. No. Is the call that you're talking about, the lady who called you, was that that incoming call from that 414 number we just looked at? Objection, leading. Sustain us to the form of the question. Did you recognize the number that called you? I didn't recognize it. I didn't look at the number. I just answered the phone. And it was recorded in your phone's call history? Yes. And it was the same number that Mr. Brooks had used your phone to dial? Objection, leading, and I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. I'm sorry, I took the exhibit down. Did you need it back up? No, we're done. All right, thank you. And that was a yes, just to be clear? Yes. Did Mr. Brooks leave at some point? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Yes. Did you see what direction he went when he left? I guess it would be like the southwest part of my property, heading more westerly towards my neighbors. Do you know what street he was headed, or he appeared to be headed toward? Objection, speculative. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Well, Central Avenue is an L street, and he was heading towards Central. 
Thank you, Your Honor. That's all. All right. Very well. Uh, any questions, Mr. Brooks, for this yes. witness? I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Um, do you recall um, giving a statement to a Detective Schwartz? <coughs> I'm not sure what his name was. I'm referring to a detective, Mandy L. Schwartz, so that would be a woman. There was a female, yes. And do you recall giving a statement to the woman law enforcement officer? Yes. Do you recall uh, if that was the same night or days immediately after? Or? It was the same night. And do you recall in that statement if you were asked about the a description of the person in your driveway? Yes. Do you recall what you uh, what you said? Yes. May you state it for the record and for the jury? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, black male, 30s, um, dreadlocks. Um, red shirt, jeans, no shoes, no jacket. If it pleases the court, I have uh, the statement here, and I would like to show the witness. Is it his written statement? It's the, I'm guessing, whatever statement he gave to Detective Shorts. Is it a written statement? I don't know if it's a written statement. Would maybe it the, may. Maybe would it this may. be the police report? Yeah. If it's not his written statement, then I'm gonna deny that request to show it to the witness. You may ask a question. Do you recall in your um, report with Detective Shorts? that you described the male as approximately 5'5 five, five to 5'6, five, weighing approximately 120 to 125 pounds, and the male appeared to be in his 20s? Um, I mean, yeah, I don't recall. Any reason why, um, this report would say that and then you would when you were asked the description you gave a different description any reason why the two would conflict objection grounds argumentative grounds and mistakes the evidence sustained reason for the sustain grounds for the sustain sustained as to the form of the question and it mistakes the testimony in part well I'm reading from the report that was given to the detective. And you can't testify as to what that report says. You can only question the witness on it, sir. That was a question. Do Do you recall? He said he did not recall. Next question. Any reason why your um, description would change from that night till now? Um, um, I'm not sure. Um, you made reference to um, when the mail that was in your driveway left your driveway, they went towards Central, I think is what you said. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Do you recall stating in um, your report that they went in the direction of West Avenue? 
Yes. Would it be fair to say that that's two different directions? Um, yes. Any reason why that would change from then till now? Um, not sure. And you made reference to it being kind of dark, so it was um, a little hard to tell about uh, certain aspects of that interaction. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would you say it was dark or dusk? Dusk. So it would be fair to say that you were unable to identify tattoos? Um, I would, I would be able to, yes. You would be able to identify tattoos or you wouldn't? Not, um, I knew I saw tattoos but you couldn't make out because of the lighting? You couldn't make them out, would that be fair to say? I could make out tattoos. Do you recall stating that you were not able to identify the tattoos? Um, in, I guess, in description, I guess, her, uh, in detail, sorry. And not being able to make out in detail would be the, uh, referring to the tattoos on the arms. Yes. And during that interaction in the lighting, you could tell that there was a, a, some type of rubber band or tie in the hair. Yes. Do you recall what color that might have been? No, I don't. You, you made reference to a, um, a number calling you back and you not <coughs> looking at the number, but just answering. Do you recall stating that? Yes. Did you ever at any time ask who that was that called? Uh, I just asked if uh, it was the Uber driver.
you stated that um, your sons were with you in the driveway? Yes. Was there any interaction with your sons at that time? Mm. Don't recall. Do you recall stating that the male did not have any interactions with either of your sons? No. Do you recall stating that the male you had the, the interaction with, do you recall stating that you did not really think he was understanding what you were telling him? I don't understand the question. That would be in reference to um, you stating that your neighbor was an Uber driver, did you? Or a Lyft driver you, was, I think, the word you said. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you stated that you don't recall if the individual went to your neighbor's house at that time. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And do you recall about what time of the evening that was when you had the interaction? Um, um, I wasn't, I'm not quite sure what time it was at that time. Do you recall uh, around what time you were subpoenaed to testify here today? Um, I'm not sure. No, I'm, I'm, I think a letter came in the mail in July. And did you follow up with the district attorney's office at that point? Um, yes. Do you recall whom you spoke with? Um, uh, not quite sure the names, but. <laughs> you made a, uh, let the record reflect, you made a hand gesture with your left hand. Would that be referring to the table? Yes. The prosecution table? Yes. So you recall speaking to one of those attorneys? Yes. Do you recall whom? Um, the gentleman here. I'll stipulate that uh, Mr. Caprin's pointing at me. Yeah. All right, the record will still reflect.
And at any time, did you uh, ever see a police reporter complaining in this matter? Um, no. Did you ever yourself make a claim in this matter? I don't understand the question. Did you file a claim? Um, I don't understand the question. Did you yourself file a complaint with law enforcement? <coughs> no. Ever spoke with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained, Your Honor. 90611. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Relevance, 90611 as well. You ever seen a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Next question. Had any conversations or any interactions with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds? Uh, sustained to the form of the question. Ever had a phone conversation with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds? Sustained to the form of the question. Ever been contacted by the plaintiff in any way? Objection. Grounds. Sustained us to the form of the question. Have you ever contacted the plaintiff in any way? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained, Your Honor? As to the form of the question. Have you uh, followed uh, this matter in any way? Um, no. So it would be fair to say you didn't seek to testify in this matter. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Were you persuaded in any way to testify in this matter? No. Did you prepare in any way to testify in this matter? No. And before you, you were shown Exhibit 74, um, and that was the, the call log of your phone, correct? Before, oh, I'm sorry. With, yes. Before today, had you seen that, uh, those photos in reference to your call log? Yes. You seen them before today? Yes.
Did you anticipate seeing them today? Mm, yes. How so? Um, through um, the uh, um, sorry okay. through uh, the uh, district attorney so you were informed that you would see those same photos by the district attorney yes Were you at any time, were you at any time told what to say by the district attorneys? No. Are you even aware of a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. No. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? I previously sustained it. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Next question. Under 90611, please continue. Otherwise, I'll declare the cross-examination yeah, ended. You can, you, just, you can declare whatever you want to. No, no further questions. Oh, thank you. Can you read a ref? <coughs> Very briefly. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Capruna, I just want to clarify the geography of your neighborhood, okay? So back where you were living on uh, November 21st of last year on Central Avenue, does Central run east to west, north to south, or something else? Objection leading. Hold on, roll. You may answer, sir. Central runs east and west and north and south. Where does it, what direction does it run where you were living at the time? Objection leading. East and, east and west. Hold on, over roll. Oh. It's not leading. You may answer. Objection relevancy. It's relevant. You may answer, sir. East and west. And then where does it change and run north and south? Um, Objection relevancy. Overruled. It changes um, my neighbor's house and then it turns north and, and south. That happens to the west of where your yes. house was? Yes, actually leading. Yeah. Oh, overruled. His answer may stand. I'll see yes. Yes. Where is West Avenue in relation to where your house was? Objection, rather you see. Overruled. Um, west. <laughs> so is it fair to say that if you're standing in your driveway at the time and head west, you would hit where Central Avenue turns and then if you kept going, you'd hit West Avenue? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. So is it also fair to say that if you're heading towards Central Avenue, you're also heading toward West Avenue? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. You recall meeting with myself and my colleagues here a few weeks ago? Objection yes. relevancy. Overruled. Do you remember where that meeting took place? Um, here. In the courthouse? Mm, yeah. During business hours? Objection relevancy. Overruled. You questioned him about meeting with the prosecution. They can these are proper. I didn't question him about the time. It's proper redirect. Go ahead, sir. You may answer. Yes. We uh, yeah. discussed your potential testimony, is that right? Yes. Were we asking you questions about November twenty first? Objection speculative. Overruled. You may answer. <coughs> yes. We showed you uh, that the photograph of the call log, right? Yes. And you you had an independent recollection. You had seen that call log before because it's from your own phone. Objection. Leading. Uh, sustained as to the form of the question. Had you ever seen that photograph before? Yes. And had you ever looked at your phone screen before? Objection. For leading. Not leading. It's relevant and he may answer. Um. Yes. 
Did we at any time give you a script for your testimony today? Objection. Ask the doing and cross. Um, it's redirect. It's proper. You may answer. It's overruled. No. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all we have. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Statement calls next witness. Thank you. The state calls Aaron Cordes. Good morning. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right. It is up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing and raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shows the, truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you back? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Erin Cordes, first name E-R-I-N, last name Cordes, C-O-R-D-E-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Cordes. Good morning. Uh, Ma'am, I'd like to direct your attention to the date of November 21, 2021. Did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade that afternoon? Yes, I did. And who did you attend the parade with? Uh, my husband and my two children. Do you recall uh, from what location you watched the parade? Objection. Rather miss you. Overruled. She may answer. Uh, we watched it from the corner of West and Wisconsin. Okay. And uh, do you understand that to be near the end of the parade route? Objection. Leading. Um, overruled. She may answer. Uh, I believe it was close to the end. Um, the parade rounded the corner and continued on, and I don't know exactly where it ended. Okay. And uh, as you were uh, at that location watching the parade, did something unusual happen? Objection leading. Overruled. Um, yes, we, we saw a car going pretty fast around the corner. Um, and I remember my husband said, that's not, a, not, that's not part of the parade, grab the kids, because our kids were in the middle of the road picking up candy at the time. Okay. So, um, and the car just did not stop and kept going. Was there a police officer present at that corner? Uh, yes, there was. What did you see the police officer do? Um, well, the, the car, I thought it was coming at us for a minute, but it ended up swerving and going through the barricades and the police officer um, fired three shots at the vehicle. You were standing right there at that intersection? Yes, I was. Objections what, what noted, it's overruled. Uh, her answer may stand. Next question, go ahead. What did you do after that, ma'am? Uh, well, we ran up to the house behind us as the car was coming at us. And um, I was just kind of keeping an eye out for the car at the time because I, it looked like it was out of control and I didn't know if it was going to go up to the house we were at or what direction it was going. So we just stayed by the house for a little bit, just kind of in shock okay. after that happened. Okay. And at some point, did you decide to leave the area? Yes, we did. Where did you go? <laughs> Uh, we went. We were parked a little bit further away because we had gotten to the parade late. So we were parked um, a few blocks out of the way uh, on Elizabeth Street. Okay. In, at Aries Industries. Uh, do you have some familiarity with Aries Industries? Uh, yes, Objection. I do. Relevancy. Overruled. She may answer. Do me a favor. If there is an objection, wait until I rule on it before you answer. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. And uh, what's your familiarity with Aries Industries? Objection. Overruled. My husband is employed at Aries Industries. Do you happen to know the address of that location? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. I don't offhand, no. Okay. Do you know what street it's on? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Leading. It's not leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, Elizabeth Street. Okay. And uh, is it... A, how were you able to, um, well, strike that. You were walking back to Aries Industries, that's where you had parked. 
right? Correct. What was your route or your path that you took? We continued straight on on West Avenue until we got to Elizabeth Street and then took a right on Elizabeth Street. Okay. Pretty much a straight shot? Yes. Just a couple blocks? Yes. Down West Avenue and then you hang a right on Elizabeth? Correct. Okay. As you were doing that, making your way back to your car, uh, did you encounter somebody out on foot? Yes, we did. Tell us about that, please. Objection, lead. Overruled, she may answer. We had just rounded the corner onto Elizabeth Street and um, Daryl Brooks, we, ran into, we encountered Daryl Brooks. He came out of the shadows be between a couple houses and okay. approached us. Okay, now you refer to this person by name. Did you know Mr. Brooks prior to this encounter? No. Okay, never met him before. Correct. Objection. And you yeah. said he, oh, hold on, I'm sorry. Um, the objection came after her answer. Uh, her answer will stand. Uh, next question. You said he kind of came out of, the, did you say the bushes? Objection. What did you say? Objection. Oh, overruled. She rephrased. He may answer. She may answer. I'm sorry. It appeared he came be from between two houses. So I, I don't know exactly where he was. Okay. And did you notice his appearance when he approached you? Objection. Leaving. Overruled. Yes, I did. What did you notice? Um, it was, I just remember it was a very windy, cold night, and he was dressed pretty inappropriately for the night. He had a, I noticed he was visibly shivering. He had a red short sleeve t-shirt on and was not wearing shoes. Do you see the same person present in this courtroom here today? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'm going to ask that Mr. Brooks be instructed to remove his mask and look at the witness so she can properly identify him, please. Mr. Brooks, please uh, unmask and look at the witness. Sir, would you please unmask and look I at the am. witness? Thank I'm you. I'm some down. All right, thank you. Just want to make sure you heard me. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Is that the gentleman you encountered on the street that you're describing for us, ma'am? Yes, it is. Did Mr. Brooks speak to you in any way? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name. Um, you may answer. Uh, yes, he did. What did he say? Objection leading. Overruled. Um, he asked if um, either of us had a phone that he could use. Yeah. And, and we said, we, we hesitated because it was, it was strange. It was a strange encounter. And um, after what we had just witnessed at the parade, where I think we were both pretty much on edge at that point. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. When you're referring to we, who are you referring to? Sorry, my husband and I. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So he asked for the phone. Correct. You kind of pause. Yep. And then what'd you do? And then overruled. Go ahead, you may answer. His next words were, I'm not going to hurt you, I just need to use your phone. And that's okay. when I gave him my phone. Okay. Did um, did he use your phone? Did you see him manipulate your phone in some fashion? Objection. What do you mean by manipulate? Um overruled, she may answer. I'm sorry, what was the question? Did you see him use your phone in some way? Yes, I did. What did you see him do? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Um, he called his mom. Could you hear what he was saying on his end? Yes, I could Objection hear what he was leading. saying. Could you hear the uh, responses being provided by the person on the other end of the phone? Objection. Speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. No, I could not hear the other side of the conversation. Okay. Tell us, to the best of your memory, what you remember Mr. Brooks was saying into the phone. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Go I'll ahead and please answer, ask please. not to be called that name. Thank you. He just kept asking his mom to call him an Uber. And I. he wasn't responding to anything that she was asking. He just kept repeating, call me an Uber. I need an Uber now. Did he sound urgent in his voice? Objection. Leading. Sustained us to the form of the question. How did his voice sound? There was a sense of urgency that he needed an Uber and he needed it now. And he was um, specifically referring to the person he was speaking to by what name? Mom. Objection. Leading. Overruled. Um, she will answer. Her answer will stand. At some point, uh, 
did Mr. Brooks turn his attention to you and ask a question to you as he was still on the phone? Objection. I don't consent to being caught in that. Um, go ahead and answer. He yeah. asked for the address where, he, where we were located at the time. What did you tell him? I did not know the address, so I asked my husband what the address was, and he provided the answer. Okay. And again, you're very close to your husband's workplace. Uh, we were actually in the parking lot at that time. Okay. I'm going to... Uh... Well, let me ask you this. At, at some point, did he terminate his phone call? Objection, Lee. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, he did. And what happened then? Um, he said that he was freezing and he asked if I knew of any place that he could go warm up. So my husband directed him towards the lobby of Aries. Okay. Um, did he return your phone? His, I'm sorry. Did he return your phone to you? Yes, he did. Okay. And uh, did you see if he left your presence, where did he go? Objection. Lee. Overruled. He went up to the lobby. You saw that? Yes. Okay. Where did you go? We we were pretty on edge at that point, so we put our kids in the car as quickly as possible and drove down the road. Okay. I'm going to show you um, some uh, exhibits on the screen in front of you, okay? Um, first is 171. I'm sorry. Do you see a photograph on the screen in front of you, ma'am? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you recognize anybody or any place in that photograph? Objection, lady. Overruled. I recognize the Aries building in the background and Daryl Brooks on the porch. Okay. Uh, 171's previously been admitted, Your Honor. I'm going to uh, request permission to publish again. Permission granted. Objection. All right. Noted, it's overruled. It's already been received. Ms. Cordes, that's a touch screen in front of you. Could you just please uh, point out uh, Aries Industries <laughs> and specifically, if you can, the area where you saw Mr. Uh, Brooks Objection. head for the lobby of the building? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name again. Um, Jerry will disregard that last comment by the defendant. So do you, do you want me to circle? Yeah, circle or X or dot, it's, whatever. It's way in the other corner over here, so it's okay. hidden by the trees. Okay. So the area where you first encountered Mr. Brooks, is that actually shown in this photograph? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Jerry will disregard that comment. I don't consent. For the uh, record. Go ahead and answer, ma'am. It's more over here where we were parked. There's a second parking lot okay. over there. Okay. And then... Uh, the person in the photograph, can you circle the person, please? Is that what Mr. Brooks looks like? looked like that evening when you spoke to him? Objection, I don't consent to being caught that name. Go ahead and answer. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to put up Exhibit 1, I'm sorry, Exhibit 76. And we're going to play it for you first uh, before it gets shown to the jury, okay? So at... Uh, let me know when it's up, please. It's um, on your screen. Okay, thank you. For the record, this is a clip that's 53 seconds long. I'm just going to play maybe the first uh, 10 seconds or so and see if she recognizes. All right, we've uh, played about the first 10 seconds of that clip. Do you recognize the uh, what is shown in this video ma'am yes I do what do you recognize it to be it's the lobby of Aries Industries okay and uh, is this the door that you directed mr. Brooks to objection I don't consent to being caught that name you may answer ma'am yes okay do you believe this uh, video is a true and accurate depiction of the events of November 21 of 21 objection. yes I do uh, move to your admit 76 and permission to publish, Your Honor. I believe there was an objection. It's noted. It's overruled. Uh, exhibit 76 is received and permission to publish is granted. The witness wasn't there at the, in this video. How could it be relevant? 
Uh, your objections noted, sir. We're going to play it in its entirety, Your Honor. As soon as the jury's got it, they got it. Okay, thank you. Play. Okay, we can pause it at the 30, 39 second or 40 second mark. I said we'll play the whole thing, but uh, did you see a person approach the doors to the building during the video? Yes, I did. I saw Daryl Brooks approach the door. And is that consistent with what you saw that night uh, as you watched Mr. Brooks? Yes. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. And now that you look at uh, the door... Do you see the address for the building on the door? Yes, I do. And what is the address, please? Uh, 550. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I don't have any other questions. All right. Uh, Mr. Brooks may have questions for you. Any cross, sir? I don't consent to being called that name for the record. <coughs> Your cross, please. Can I get to it? You just stated that before the interaction with the person that you had, you didn't know him. That'd be fair to say? Yes, that's fair to say. So how could you refer to him by name if you didn't know him? I have seen the news since then and your the video of you being arrested and you had since been identified on TV. So that's how you came to the, the name? That's correct. So it would be fair to say that you got that off of news reports? That's correct. You said the individual you spoke with seemed out of place and disoriented like he didn't know where he was. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. And we, and how would you characterize disoriented? You just seemed very, very nervous and that you didn't know where you were. Who's you? You, you had specifically said, I don't know where I am. Who's you? Or where am I specifically? So disoriented would, would, from your perspective, be exactly what? Disoriented as you did not know where you were. reference to uh, your phone being used, right? That's correct. And you also made reference to not being able to hear the, uh, the person on the other line. That's correct. But you also made reference to not the person who used your phone not being able or not answer, answering what was being asked to them? That'd be fair to say? Objection. That's a compound Grounds. question, vague and unclear. Sustained us to the form of the question. If you couldn't hear 
what was being said on the other end of the line. How can you how can you say that there was questions being asked? Well, there was clearly a conversation going on, and you just kept repeating, just call me an Uber, that you were very frustrated, and whoever was asking questions of you didn't just to call you an Uber. It's just my interpretation of it. I could not hear the other end of the phone conversation. So it would be fair to say you don't know what was being discussed? Besides call me an Uber, yes, that's correct. Do you recall the description you gave in your written statement? Uh, yes, I believe so. You believe so? Yes, I recall the description I gave. And what was that? The description I gave was an African American male, about 160 pounds, 5'8", wearing a red t-shirt, no shoes. And you referred to this individual coming from between houses, you said? That's correct. Is that what you actually saw? Yes, that's what I saw. I saw you approach us at the very start of the block from between two houses. Any reason why that's not in your written statement? I don't recall. I didn't actually write it. There was an, a detective at our house that was writing the statement for it. M maybe that part got missed. I'm not sure. Was it this statement? I don't have it in front of me to see it. Uh, permission to show the witness the written statement? Well, I don't know that it's necessary, Your Honor. It ha she hasn't expressed any inability to recall. Uh, she did. She just said she don't know why that something was not in her written statement. That's <coughs> what she said is she doesn't know why the detective didn't write it in there. The detective is the one who wrote it, Your Honor. So sustained, so you, that's sustained so in the you, form of... Mr. Brooks, let me answer. Sustained is to the form of a question. So the officer was writing what you told him, or did you actually write it yourself? I did not actually write it myself. The detective was writing it as we were speaking, my husband and I. Do you recall that officer's name? No, I do not. <clears throat> you made reference, when you were at the parade, you made reference to seen a car swerve or you said the car was swerving toward you it looks like a car that was out of control I didn't know which direction it was headed <coughs> and you said you saw it drove toward the barricade Correct. I saw it drive through the barricade. When you say through the barricade, um, describe that. 
The car sped up and drove straight through the barricade and continued on West Avenue. Do you recall if this barricade was standing up or? I do down? not. I do not recall that. I was <coughs> in the middle of the road to prevent traffic from coming through, so I don't know if it was. I would assume it was standing up. And it, it, was it at that same moment that um, you saw officer fire shots? That's correct. Do you recall how many shots? Three shots. Did you see if the shots hit the vehicle, the car, no. as you say? No, I did not. I was running up towards the house at the time with my son in my arms, and I was just trying to keep an eye on the vehicle, so I did not see where the shots actually went. Did you see a vehicle hit anyone? No, I did not. Could you see into the vehicle when you saw it? No, I could not. You said the vehicle went down West Street? West Avenue, correct. Did you see where it went from there? Or did it just go straight down West Avenue? Uh, it, it continued on West Avenue. I, I was, at one point, um, the house was blocking the road, so I, could, I couldn't see where the vehicle continued on. Anything else stick out to you about that day? I I, I don't I don't know. Just, I mean, besides besides seeing the vehicle and and the police firing shots and then running into you afterwards, I mean, that was strange enough. Do you recall uh, what day you gave the? Um, Statement. Was Not that exactly. the same night, or was it a few days after, or a week, or? It might have been up to a week later. I don't know the exact date. Recall why it took so long? I I don't know. I received a phone call from a detective probably <sighs> almost a week later, and I would assume that they had a lot of other other people to attend to, other witnesses to get to. It was not a priority at the time. I was not. So it'd be fair to say by that time you had saw news reports and had learned information about what happened. Correct. Before today, had you seen any of the uh, video footage or, or uh, 
photos that that you saw today? Had had you seen any of those before today? Are you talking about the video of you being arrested, or I guess I don't understand the question. Uh, the videos that the video footage that you saw today. Had you seen that before today? I did see the Aries Industries clip before. Yes. What about the other uh, the other exhibit that was shown? I recognize that from a ring video I had I had seen from the arrest. So it would be fair to say a lot of what you learned came from news reports. After the incident, yes. Did you make any claim in this matter? File a claim? What kind of a claim? Have you filed any claim? No. You filed a complaint? I not no, I I just um gave a witness statement to the detectives. I did not file a complaint specifically. About what time did you learn that you could possibly testify in this matter? Objection relevance. Overruled. You may answer. Um, when I received a subpoena in the mail from the DA's office. Do you recall whose name was on that subpoena? Uh, Sue Opper. Do you see Sue Opper in court today? Yes, I do. Can you point her out for the jury and for the record? I'll stipulate, Your Honor. Thank you. Record will reflect the stipulation and the witness identifying attorney do, offer. Do you call do you recall around uh what time you received that uh <coughs> subpoena? I don't recall exactly no. After you received the subpoena did, subpoena, did you follow up with the district attorney's office at that point? Uh, they contacted me. Attorney operative? Some someone it was a someone from the witness. I don't know what her exact title is. So it's someone from the DA's office. It's not specifically Sue Opper. Like a witness advocate type of. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Was it like a witness advocate? I don't know what her exact title is. Do you recall her, the, her name? Yeah, her, her, yes, her name is Carrie. <clears throat> After you learned of the additional information, did you uh, read any police reports or a complaint? No.
Are you aware of who the plaintiff may be in this matter? Objection irrelevant. Sustained. been notified who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained, Your Honor. Next question, please. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Yes, there is. And who's the plaintiff? I believe it's the state of Wisconsin. Would that constitute a, a, a breathing human being or an entity? Objection, Grounds. argumentative, irrelevant, Grounds. sustained. Are you aware that only a human being can bring a complaint or be a plaintiff? Objection, misstatement Grounds. of the law, sustained. You ever had any interaction with the state of Wisconsin? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Mr. Grounds for Sir, under 90611, please move on. Have you ever contacted the state of Wisconsin in this matter? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Your 90611 move on or I'll declare the cross-examination ended. Of course you would. No further questions. Can you redirect? Nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. This will also be a very good opportunity to take a mid-morning break. I'll rise for the jury, please. For the parties, uh, please be back in 10 minutes. We are in recess.
All right, thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State have the next witness available. Um, yes. Yep, no, I know. I oh, need the yeah. jury. Yes, we're ready. We're back on the record. We'll have the jury brought out. Okay. I know I did that once, but I'm not going to do that again. Audio <laughs> on? No. Not yet. Now it is. You got to. I got to get faster on that. Yep. Sometimes I just forget. Are you going to address subject matter jurisdiction? No. Still has yet to be proven for the record. <coughs> Is that a judicial determination that you don't have to answer there, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, I've already answered subject matter jurisdiction. You know that full well. No, the I written don't. The decision was entered last week. I know nothing. It has yet to be proved. That's what I know. It doesn't need to be proved. It, it does. It has to be proven by the prosecution. You know that. No, it, I, I actually know to the contrary, so we're not going to address so, it. So show me a lawful law that, is, that it says Mr. that. Mr. Brooks, I provided you with the law. No, I'll you give have you not. An, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll have my clerk print off another copy of that order. So you don't you have, have to it. do that. Have, have no, her I'm print. going to because you apparently didn't read no, it. No, so have her print off proof. Have her print off proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction. How about that? It has to be proven Mr. for the Brooks, record. It has yet to be proven. You are simply wrong as a matter of law. No, I'm not. If I'm wrong, then then show me show me that I'm wrong. I've given you the constitutional and no, the statutory authority. No, and you have not. Law. You have not proven it on the record. 
It doesn't need to be proven, sir. It does need to be proven. I believe the jury's coming in. Right. I believe that. Got to prove it. You got to prove subject matter jurisdiction. Uh, set for value and return for value of that document is not proof of subject matter jurisdiction for the record. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State may call its next witness. The state will call Anthony Witchers. All right. Good morning, sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right. It is upper riser. <coughs> when you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you sell these words of the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Anthony Winters, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, W-I-N-T-E-R-S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Sir, direct your attention to November 21st, 2021. Were you working in the city of Waukesha that day? Yes. What were you doing? I was driving Lyft. Okay. Can you explain for those few people, I think, who don't know what Lyft is, mm -hmm. can you explain what that is? It's a ride share app where people can request rides from point A to point B. Now, some people use Uber. Is that similar? Sim yes, same thing. <laughs> and is that your full time job? No. Did you go to the parade, the city of Waukesha parade that day? I did not. Did, were you aware that the parade was in downtown Waukesha that day? Objection, mm -hmm. lady. Um, overall, he may answer. Yes, I was. How were you aware of that? Uh, it was, everything was blocked off and there was heavy police presence and then I saw kind of the convoy going. Okay. So you say everything was blocked off, what do you mean by that? Like a lot of the streets, when I was having to go pick up people, a lot of the streets were blocked off so I couldn't go certain ways. Do you recall approximately what time you started uh, driving that day? Um, it was around like 3.25. Mr. Winters, do me a favor. If there is an objection that's been raised by either party, mm -hmm. wait to answer the question. I'll rule on the objection and then I'll let you know. Yes, ma'am. So the objection's noted. It's overruled and you may continue answering. Yes, ma'am. Um, 3.25. Thank you. And do you know approximately how many fears you took um, that day? That day. Speculative. Overruled, he may answer. That day it was probably anywhere from like uh, about 11 or 12, somewhere in there. Do you, were, you, were your um, clients all from the city of Waukesha? Was that the general area that you were working? Objection, mm -hmm. irrelevant. Overruled, you may answer. No, um, I just happened to be in that area at that time. At some point after, do you know approximately what time you got done working that night? Oh, it was probably later around like 10, 11 o'clock that night. When you got home, did you see anything on the news? No. Um, at some point, did you become aware of an incident that had occurred during the city of Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes. Overruled, he may answer. His answer may stand. Generally, what information were you, did you obtain? Objection, um, leading. Overruled. Um, when I saw every, like a bunch of police cars going, you know, I contacted my sister because my niece goes to school at Carroll and I was wondering what was going on. She told me something that wasn't even true that was going on, but later after, uh, like the next day after watching the news and, you know, social media, I found out what happened. Looking back, when you were working November 21st, 2021, did anything seem relevant with regard to that news that you saw? Objection, Lee. Overruled. You may answer. Yeah, I had a call that was in the area, and it was like, it was like just like a really weird call because no one ever showed up, but there was a very descriptive um, message that I got from the person that asked for the call about who I was looking for. 
Okay, so I'm going to direct your attention to that that day, November 21st, at approximately 5.15 p.m. Um, what time did that, or how do you receive communication when you get a client? Um, when you're signed into the app, it'll just pop up. You know, it'll, you can accept it or you can decline. So you say it just pops up. How does it pop up on, it, on, my, on my cell phone? Okay. And um, did you receive uh, a fare request or a ride request at approximately 515? Objection leading. Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I did. What information were you given with regard to that request? Um, Objection leading. Overruled, he may answer. So the fare came in for a uh, dawn. Um, and the address I was picking up at was, I think it was 550 Elizabeth. And it was an empty, well, it wasn't an empty, it was, a, it was an empty parking lot, but it was a company that was closed. Um, and then I was given information that I was looking for a light-skinned black guy with dreadlocks. Okay, now when you say that your, the name, is, was it a name associated with John? Mm -hmm. That's a yes? Yes. Okay. And what does that mean to you? I'm not sure exactly how Lyft works, but... That's just... Objection, relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. That's just the name of the person that I'm picking up. That I'm, I'm assuming that's the person I'm picking up. Okay. And were you in the city of Waukesha when that um, pop-up came on your phone? Yes. So what did you do? Um, I drove to the parking lot and waited for... the and Hit that I arrived and waited for whomever was to come out of the company. And that would be, you said 550 Elizabeth Street? Yes, ma'am. And that's in the city of Waukesha? Yes, ma'am. Did you, or do you receive information as to where you're taking the person when you initially get the pop-up? Objection. Leave. Overruled. You may answer. When you initially get the request, you don't know where the person is going until you say that you arrived, then you can see the address that they're going to. So, did you eventually arrive at that location? Yes. <clears throat> what did you observe? Um, it was just a dark parking lot and um, a couple of police cars on the street. Um, no one was really around those. It seemed like it was like a closed building. I didn't know, you know, it was an empty parking lot, no one there. <laughs> okay. And did you see anyone, both strike that. When you arrived at the location, do you send something through your app that says I've arrived? Objection, read. Mm -hmm. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, you just, yeah, there's a button that you can just click and say I arrived, and it sends a message to the person letting you know that you're out, let them know that you're outside and they have five minutes to come out. Now is that when you would get the destination on your app? Yes. And do you recall? <laughs> What that destination was? Um, I don't recall the physical address. I just know it was on 19th Street in Milwaukee. So you said that you, the automated message went out saying that you were there and that you give that person five minutes? Yes. What happened after five minutes? I began to message with uh, whomever the person was on the other end, letting them know that I was waiting outside and that there you know I was in a white car and this is a chat feature as part of the app yes overruled your answer may stand and then what happened um, I received a message back let me know who I was looking for and that they were calling a ride for someone else and they didn't know where he was they then again gave me a description of who I was looking for. And what was that description? Objection leading. Overruled. Right. I actually answered. Um, overruled, he may answer. A light-skinned black guy with dreadlocks. After you were given that information, what did you do? I sent a message saying I didn't see anyone. Um, I received a message back saying I don't know where he is. His phone died. He called me from someone else's phone. What did you do then? Um, at that point, I didn't know. I, it was a basketball court out there, so I thought I was waiting on a kid. Okay. So I didn't want to just leave. Um, so I got out of my car. I knocked on the door at the company to see if anybody would come out. I rang the buzzer. 
got no answer. Um, I got back in my car. I sent a message and saying sent the message saying there's no one around. Um, you know, could they you know make sure the person comes out because I had already been past the five minute grace period. Okay. Um, I got a message back saying I'll try to call them. I don't know what to tell you. Then what happened? At that point, I was like, I had been out there for about seven and a half minutes. So at that point, I just canceled the ride. Approximately what time <clears throat> do, you, do you recall canceling the ride? Objection, leave. Over a roof. Um, it was around 5.30ish, okay. somewhere around there. And when someone requests request a ride and they don't appear, is there a charge then to that person? Objection, irrelevancy. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, there's a charge if they go past the five minute grace period. There is a charge. Okay, thank you. Nothing further. Thank you. Right. There may be some questions. Uh, any questions for this witness? Yes. Do you remember about what time the uh, call came in for the lift? 5.15. Call being uh, interviewed by any law enforcement in the days after uh, that night? Yes. And do you know if. Uh, do you know if that was by phone or, or in person? It was in person. Upon arriving at the uh, destination, you were supposed to be uh, giving a lift to someone. Do you recall uh, if there was uh, anything strange about the uh, the destination? Yeah, it was a closed building. There was no one out there, no cars in the parking lot. You said you canceled the ride around 5.30ish? Yeah. Do you, uh, do you recall what you did from that point? I took another fare. Same area or? Same area. You made you made reference to uh, someone telling you uh, something that wasn't true that was going on. Do you recall what that was? I do recall that it was. Uh, my sister said that the school told my niece to stay in her dorm because there was an active shooting.
usually um, does your Lyft app have a, a profile picture attached to it? No. Do you recall um, when speaking to law enforcement something to the effect of referring to a profile picture or a description included in the profile? I recall saying that there was no profile picture. Are you able to see any phone numbers or contact information? I was not. You can't see that stuff on the app. Before you canceled the ride, do you recall the last uh, contact with the, the person who had set the lift up? Um, yes, I, I'm pretty sure sh they said, I don't know what to tell you when I told them that I didn't see anyone. And that was via text message? It's a chat through the app. And you say usually uh, even if it's uh, no pickup, there's a, a, a charge still associated with it? Yeah. Do you recall how many uh, requests you completed after that failed one? Approximately eight to 10. And you did state that you were not at the parade that, 
that evening, right? True. I'll start the question. I think you any redirect? No. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. State may call its next witness, please. The state calls Daniel Ryder. Mr. Ryder, if you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right. It is up a riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state and spell your first and last names for the record. Daniel Ryder, D-A-N-I-E-L-R-I-D-E-R. -E -E Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, sir, do you live in the city of Waukesha? I do. Where were you living back on November 21st of 2021? 553 Elizabeth Street. Were you living there, um, excuse me, were you home there that afternoon and early evening, that Sunday afternoon? I was. Was anybody else home with you? No. Can you describe what that residence looks like? Is it a single family house, multi-unit? What, what's it look like? There's yeah, it's a... Uh, um, overall, you may answer. Uh, it's a three, three or four bedroom house with two bathrooms. It's a Cape Cod style home, land and stone. Um, yeah, it's got a two and a half car garage. Okay. Do you know what Aries Industries is? Yeah. Where is Aries Industries in relation to the house you're describing? Objection leading. Overruled. Witness may answer. Yeah, Aries is right across the street from my house. That afternoon, November 21st, were you aware <coughs> that the Waukesha Christmas Parade was taking place? Yes, I, I was aware of the parade. Did you attend the parade? No. Did you watch the Packer game? Uh, I did watch the Packer game earlier that day, but I was watching the um, Chiefs-Cowboys game that, uh, that evening. Or that I think it was afternoon. I don't know exactly what time it was, but do you recall what happened at approximately five o'clock p.m. that day? Objection, leading. Overruled. Can I answer? Yeah. So earlier that day, I was in my hometown Prairie du Chien for deer season, and then I drove back to Waukesha. Um, I got home in Waukesha. I went home in Waukesha around four o'clock, and I was watching the game. <laughs> and then uh, about five o'clock, my ring doorbell goes off. Uh, and then there's a gentleman at my front porch knocking on the door saying that they're homeless, they're cold, and they need to use my phone so that they can tell their Uber where to pick them up. What did that gentleman look like? Uh, he was a uh, African-American. Um, he had long hair and a beard. Um, Do you remember what he was wearing? Yeah, he had a uh, like a red t-shirt reddish orange t-shirt and no shoes on, pants. Um, but I remember it stood out to me because it was cold and really windy that day. And he was outside with, with a t-shirt and no shoes and saying he's really cold. So that stood out. You mentioned a few moments ago your ring doorbell. Is that a device affixed to your exterior uh, door frame? Objection, Lee. Overruled. Uh, it's it's fixed to my, the outside of my porch, so not quite on the on the door, but just next door to the door. Yeah. Okay. And does that capture video? Objection yeah. Leading. Overruled. Yes. What about audio? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled. Did your ring video doorbell capture the video and audio of your initial interaction with that gentleman on the afternoon of November twenty first? Objection leading. Overruled. The ring doorbell, when it senses motion, it takes a 20 second snippet. And the 20 seconds that I got from the initial interaction was just 
um, the suspect coming up to my house and knocking on the door and saying he's homeless and needs help. I didn't get the verbal interaction that I had with him on, cam on the ring doorbell because it only filmed 20 seconds. After the fact, so later that evening, did you speak with law enforcement? Yes. And did you subsequently at some point provide that 20 second ring video doorbell clip to a law enforcement officer? Yes. Did you and edit it in any way before sending it? Objection. No. Lady. No, and, and there was uh, four or five different snippets, not just the one 20 second snippet. So there was one, the initial interaction of him coming to the door, and then there was another one of him leaving and then an interaction there and then uh, the, the police coming to the door and him asking to come back inside the house when I wouldn't let him in. So there's there's four clips that I submitted, four or five that I submitted to the police. All right, let's work our way through those. Let's yeah. start, Your Honor, I'd ask that we please show exhibit number 75 for the witness only. Objection, rather than see. Overruled. See a video on the screen in front of you? I do. What are we looking at here? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, this is Mr. Brooks coming up to my door. You said Mr. Brooks. Did you know his name at that time? Uh, not at the time, no. When did you learn that name? Uh, the officers were using it after the fact, so I don't know, about 5 30 or so that day. Okay. Uh, does this appear to accurately depict your front porch as it looked? Uh, as that subject walked up to your door? Yes. And this is the video you sent to law enforcement that night? Or sometime after that night? Yes. Move Exhibit 75 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Exhibit 75 has received permission to publish. Granted. Objection. It's noted. Overrule. As we're waiting for that to pop up in the uh, jury box on their screens, I'll ask you, Mr. Ryder, do you see a date and timestamp on the bottom right-hand corner of this video? Objection okay. leading. Overrule. I do. Is that a timestamp that's a feature of ring, or was that added after the fact? Objection. Overrule. Uh, it's a feature of ring. I didn't add that, yeah. And to your knowledge, does that timestamp appear to be accurate? Objection. Overrule. Speculative. Yes, that is accurate. For the record, though. Objection was overruled. This is a 20 second clip. I'm going to ask that we play it once with audio. Yeah, it says uh, November 21st, 2021, and the timestamp says 17.01, so 5.01 p.m. Okay. The voice we heard in that exhibit that we just played, whose voice is that? Objection, leading. Overruled. Objection. You may answer, sir. Uh, it's Mr. Brooks's voice. It's not yours? No. Uh, Your Honor, I'd ask that Mr. Brooks please be instructed to remove his face mask momentarily. Sir, would you please remove your face mask and face the witness? Was that a question of... The state's asked, there, sir, please remove your face mask and face the witness. I'm, just, I'm confused. He made a statement about the voice. Uh, um, um, he, the question's been asked and answered. Please what, remove your mask. What was the question? Please remove your mask and face the witness. Mr. Ryder, do you see the person depicted in exhibit number 75 in the courtroom today? Yes. 
Can you identify him for us by telling us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? Uh, he's sitting at the table right there wearing a black suit and a gray striped tie. And as the record reflect that the witness has identified Mr. Brooks? The record will reflect that the witness has identified uh, the defendant as the person uh, depicted in this video and the person who was on his porch on November 21. Objection now. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Go ahead, your next question, please. Thank you. What happened uh, in the moments after this video, the 20 seconds that were captured? Um, so he was on my porch for, I don't know exactly, a minute maybe, and he was telling me the interaction, or uh, he was telling me that he needed to use my phone to let his Uber know where to pick him up, and that he was homeless and cold, and um, he said he didn't have any weapons or anything on him, and he lifted his shirt real quick, and I was like, no, it's okay, you can use my phone, and um, I let him come inside and warm up. Uh, I just tend to believe people, and I'm from a small town, and we had people that need help all the time because we live right off a highway, so I'm used to, you know, doesn't didn't phase me too much. I mean, I was nervous for sure, but I was like, yeah, I can let use my phone, and he made it sound like the Uber was going to be here just any second, just needed to know where to pick him up. So I said, yeah, you can come and warm up while you wait for the Uber, and uh, I let him sit on the couch right by the window out front, I said, you can look out here waiting for your Uber, and he's on the phone most of the time after that with uh, his mom, and uh, he's saying you know, the address 553 Elizabeth Street is where it needs to come and you know how far away is it kind of things like that but okay uh, I guess I guess is that what you're wondering or let me back up yeah. you made a motion with your hands there uh, regarding what Mr. Brooks said about not being armed can you, can you do that again just for anybody who missed it objection I don't know not to see you being called that name go ahead and again for the record yeah so I don't remember exactly what the motion was, I remember him saying he didn't have any weapons and he's um, not dangerous. And I think he lifted his shirt really quickly. But then I was like, ah, oh, don't worry, I'm not worried about that. And so I didn't, it's not like I patted him down or anything like that. But. Okay. Did you let him in the front door that would be right next to your video doorbell? The I actually. Oh. I can rephrase. Go ahead, rephrase. What door did you let Mr. Brooks into your home? I, I let him in the back door. I don't to be called that name. Overruled. Go ahead, you may answer. Yeah, the back door. Okay. So he went around the side of the house to get to the back door? That's right. Okay. What happened when he got to the back door? Mom. I don't remember exactly. I remember letting him in. Well, I remember, so I just got back hunting, so I asked him to go through the back door so I could make sure I didn't have any weapons laying around. And so I, after that was good, then I let him in the back door. Well, just to give me a second to make sure nothing was tempting or anything. But I let him in the back door, uh, and I think I gave him a coat right away, and then gave him my phone, and then uh, told him where to sit down. And when I told him to sit in the spot, he didn't move or anything. He stayed right there and listened to me. What else did you give him? I gave him a sandwich because he said he was homeless. Um, and I was, I said, oh, I can get you some slippers to put on your feet to warm your feet up. I never did end up giving him slippers. Uh, but yeah, so I gave him a jacket to wear while he was at my house. I gave him a spot to sit and wait for the Uber and a sandwich. You testified earlier that he was on the phone with his mom. How do you know that? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. Uh, a few reasons. I heard him say mama a lot, and his mother called me. And I didn't answer, but his mom called and left a voicemail after the fact, uh, confirming it. Whose phone was he using while he was inside your house? Objection. Relevancy. Overall. He's using my personal cell phone. <coughs> How would you describe his demeanor as he was inside your house? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Um, I would say flustered, but also there were many times he was thanking me, and so he was grateful, and he even said, Thank you so much for showing me love, man. And he was calling me bro. and So it wasn't, I guess that didn't make me feel like I was in any danger at the moment. Did Mr. Brooks leave your home at some point? Objection. I don't consider to be called that name. Um, overruled. You may answer. Um, he, uh, I'm sorry, can you, I lost train of thought. Can you say it again? Did he leave your home at some point? Yeah, he uh, left when I asked him to. So he was in my house for eight or nine minutes, and then 
Uh, I was standing on the front door looking outside because I was getting a little nervous because I thought the Uber would be there in a minute or two, not 10. And so after eight or nine minutes, I'm looking around outside and I see a police car drive by. And then I see another one coming down the street. And so I tell him, I say, hey, uh, I, we don't get a lot of police traffic on this street. And I'm getting nervous and this is just too weird of a situation. You're fine to wait for your Uber, but you need to do it outside of my house. And he was a little bit like, oh, no, it's okay, don't worry about it, don't worry. And I said, no, you need to leave. And he, then he listened and got up, and uh, I've got video footage of that, of me escorting him outside of my house. He's still on the phone, and he's still got my jacket on, but I just said, you need to leave. Um, do, do you want me to say, I mean, do you want me to keep going? Or? I just want you to answer my question. So. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's pause there, though. Sure. And show for the witness only, please, uh, exhibit number 77. We'll, just, uh, we'll play a few seconds of this without any audio, and actually, to save time authenticating, Your Honor, I think we'll do this with <coughs> the remaining three videos okay. we have. Go ahead. So this so, is uh, 70... 77, yep. 77. All right, thank you. We'll play a few seconds, please, without... Yeah, yep, there we go. Okay, we played four seconds from Exhibit 77. Do you recognize that clip? I do. And what is that? Uh, it's Mr. Brooks walking out first with a jacket on and me in a long sleeve shirt, a gray shirt, walking out behind him. Can we show for the witness only, please, Exhibit 78? Go ahead. We'll play the first couple of seconds of this one, too. played the first eight seconds of that. Did you recognize that clip? Yes. What does that show? That shows Mr. Brooks after I had him leave and get my phone and jacket. He was outside and then him asking to come back inside because he said he left his ID inside my house. And that was on the audio, um, but it sounded like he had the audio off for that. And we'll show you 79 now without any audio as well, just for the witness. <coughs> Okay. We played eight seconds of Exhibit 79. Do you recognize that video? Yep. What does it show? Uh, it shows an officer on my porch after the suspect was put into cuffs asking if I knew who the suspect was. Are Exhibits 77, 78, and 79 accurate depictions of your porch that night? Jason. Yes. Overruled. His answer may stand. Move exhibits 77, 78, and 79 into evidence and ask to publish all three, please. Objection. The objection is noted as to all three. It is overruled. Exhibits 77, 78, and 79 are received permission to publish. All three are granted. Okay, 77 is up now for everybody. It's a 21 second clip. We're going to play it once with audio, please. Before you do that, can we just confirm it's in the jury box? Not yet. Okay. Let me know. I guess while we're waiting, we can make use of this time. Mr. Ryder, could you read the time and date stamp for us on the bottom right-hand corner? Objection, rather be seen. Overall, go ahead. Yeah, it's November 21st, 2021, uh, 1710, so 5, 10 p.m. Okay, we've got it up for the jurors. Let's play this once with audio. Do you see yourself in that video? Yes. What are you wearing in the video? A gray shirt. A gray shirt. Did you hear the wind in that video? Yes. 
What do you recall being said in that portion of the video? Jesse Lee. Overruled. I'm walking Mr. Brooks outside of my house, and my neighbor, Greg, says, Are you guys looking for that guy? And I had no idea of anything at this point, and so I say, I don't know. This might be him. Um, you can hear that in the audio. I don't know if anybody was able to distinguish that, but that's what was said. And then um, Mr. Brooks says, no, no, no. And then I say, can I have my phone, please? And then after that, I say, can I have my jacket, please? Did he provide those items to you? He did. Okay. Can we put up uh, for the jury, please, Exhibit 78? <coughs> this is a 20-second clip. We will play it once uh, with audio, please. Why me? Why me? Mr. Ryder, what happened during that video clip? Jason Lee. Roll. Mr. Brooks, or I should say the suspect, came to my door, asked to come back inside to look for his ID. I said, no, I'll look for it. You stay out there. Um, and I was looking underneath the couch and everywhere that he sat for his ID when I hear the, the police officers saying, put your hands up. And Did you ever find the, uh, that person's ID? No. Did that person leave anything else in your side of your house? No. Flip-flops? No. Sweatshirt? No. Jason leading. Uh, sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase that last question. What, if anything else, did that suspect leave in your house? I don't. Jason leading. Overruled. He may answer. I didn't find anything left in my house. Okay. Can we please uh, show for... The jury <coughs> exhibit 79. <coughs> this is a 19 second clip. We will play it once, once with audio. <coughs> Paused at 18 seconds. That's the police officer you were talking about. Yeah. Okay. Can you, just for the record, read for us the time and date stamp on the bottom right-hand corner here at the 18-second mark of Exhibit Number 79? Yeah, it's November 21st, 2021, and the time is 17:12, 59 seconds, so 5:12 p.m. The video is a little bit blurry. Do you know where uh, Mr. Brooks is? At this point, objection leading, and I do not consent to being called that name. Um, overruled. Objections noted. Uh, you may answer the question. Yeah, the suspect is on the east side of my walkway, on the northeast side of my house, in my yard. Um, if you see where those two police officer heads are, um, Mr. or the suspect is on the grass right there. That's all I have for this witness. Thank you. All right. Any cross? Yes. One, just one second. Okay. Will you be needing any of those videos to put back up at any time? Uh, not that I can think of at the moment. Thank you. And before that, before that evening, you didn't know the guy that came to your house, correct? Correct. And so, why do you refer to why do you refer to him by name if you didn't know him? <laughs> because after the fact, the police officers and um, other people involved 
informed me of who the suspect was that was at my house that night. And it'd be fair to say you got, uh, you captured or your ring uh, captured quite a little bit of video. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. And did you turn over all the ring footage to law enforcement? I believe so. I mean, there was probably seven or eight other snippets of just officers coming in and out. I, I do believe I turned all that in, but nothing of evidence or anything. And were you aware that the ring footage was shown on social media platforms? I was aware, yes. Any idea how that came about? Protection. Grounds. Relevance. Um, Grounds. Overall, team answer. Uh, yeah, I released it. And you released it. What, what do you explain what you mean by released it? Yeah, the news, uh, the news wanted the footage and, um, I thought that this was good footage for this community and the victims to see some justice of the suspect put into cuffs, so I decided to release it. And were you, were you paid for that release? I was. So it would be fair to say that you profited off your ring footage? The incentive to release the footage was not to make money and we, we donated a lot of money of the money we did see off of it but yes we did do we did the money did make or the video did make money do you recall how many uh videos you released i believe it was four and you got paid for all four i don't know if it was paid for a per video basis or we we worked we were getting bombarded by the news so we did it we worked with the agent that then dealt with all the news people and we just got some off the back end so i don't exactly know how that works so would it be fair to say that you sold that footage yes And you stated that you were, um, while having this interaction, you were, you were a little nervous. Debbie, fair to say? Yes, sir. Did you feel like you were in any danger or just nervous? I never felt like I was in danger until I saw the police driving by. Then I did. But initially, your interaction, you didn't feel like you would be overtaken in any way? No, and the person at my door was very polite, so I didn't feel in danger. Testifies uh, to the to the effect that you had just arrived back home from hunting that that evening. That's correct. Well, not just arrived, but four o'clock probably got home by four fifteen.
at that time had you had you heard anything about what happened at the parade? No, I, all I knew was that there was a parade that day, but I had not heard of any incident happening at all. At any time during your, during your interaction with the suspect, did you notice any um, car keys? No. It's not to say he didn't have any on him, but I didn't notice any. You didn't notice any? That, nope. That'd be fair to say? Yep, that'd be fair to say. notice any drug or alcohol I didn't personally notice any drug or alcohol I know there was some substance found on my porch after the fact but I, I didn't I didn't notice I, I think maybe I smelled a little bit of weed or something but nothing stood out too much stated that you gave the suspect uh, a jacket and a sandwich? Yes, sir. And was that due to um, the suspect saying that they were homeless and, and cold, or did you just take the initiative to do that? Um, I don't remember the suspect asking for food, but I do remember them saying multiple times that they were homeless and cold and needed help, and so I took the initiative to try to help any way I could in the moment. <clears throat> the, yeah, I think I offered the jacket and the sandwich. I don't think they ever asked for either one. And you let them use your phone, correct? Yes. And how do you know for sure who they were talking to? Because the number that they had called called me back and left a voicemail saying that they were the mother of the person that just called. Um, she said something to the effect of, hi, my, you just let my son use your phone. I'm calling back to figure out what's going on. And so that told me. And I did hear the suspect use mama when they were on the phone too. Did you um, follow up with that voicemail? Uh, I did not. Oh. Grounds. Overruled. May I just clarify the basis was, he didn't describe it as a voicemail? He did, he said he left. I thought he did, but. Yeah. Anyway, the objection's overruled. Um, did you finish asking your question? You can, why don't you just ask it again? Um, did you uh, follow up with the caller that left the voicemail after that? I never called her back, no. She just left, called one time and left one voicemail. I did give the phone number to the police because they um, asked for it, so I gave them the number you had called and then told them about the voicemail calling me back. But I didn't release that to anybody else other than the police. Do you recall uh, keeping that, that phone number in your call log at, after that? I, I believe it's still in my voicemail history, if that's what you're wondering. Even, even now? Even now, yeah. Any reason why you would keep it this long? Uh, it's just, I didn't per go out of my way to keep it. It just, 
is on there. I don't get a lot of voicemails, so I, I checked this morning just to make sure it was on there, and it still is on the bottom of my list. So why would you check for it this morning? Because I thought maybe it'd come up today. I don't, I don't remember the exact number, but I still have the voicemail if, if I needed to bring that up. What led you to believe that it may come up this morning? Because I knew, I knew I had to testify, but I didn't know what, what exactly would come up or not. What do you mean by you knew you had to testify? Is that... I got a subpoena and asked to come and share what happened at my house that day, and that was one of the things that happened. You seek, so you seeked uh, testifying. Objection. Grounds. Um, sustain us to the form of the question. <clears throat> so you made reference to still keeping the voicemail. Did you uh, keep any of the ring footage? It's still on my phone, yes. Uh, you said it was like six or seven videos? I didn't keep anything past the officer coming up to my door after. Um, so I think I've got only four saved, maybe five. Any reason why you would keep those this long? I just haven't felt the need to get rid of them, I guess. I mean, it's that video is protecting me, you know, from being involved or anything, so I, there's no reason I would ever get rid of it. Would it be fair to say that you weren't involved in anything that, that evening? Other than trying to help somebody who I thought was in need, I was not involved in anything that evening. So why would you have any fear that the... Uh, you may be implicated in anything and if you know that you weren't involved in anything. Because I had a suspect who had just done horrendous things come to my house and automatically people are going to think that maybe I had something or I knew you or something and I didn't. And so this is just validating that you told me you were homeless and some, and I was trying to help a stranger out when really Sorry, what's the question? I mean, it would be fair to say that you you weren't arrested in any connection to any events that evening. Would that be fair to say? That'd be fair. To, I've never been arrested. And so my question would be, why would you think that you would be implicated in any way? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Next question. <laughs> And how do you feel that the keeping of the videos would protect you from something that you don't need protection from? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. I think I misspoke when I said that it was protecting me because it's not necessarily protecting me. It's just something I haven't got rid of yet. Do you recall an uh, interaction with uh, law enforcement by the name of Officer Luling? I do. 
do you recall emailing him uh, portions of the uh, ring footage? Yes. Do you recall how many portions? Maybe four or five. I, I don't remember exactly how many. So, no, I can't recall that exactly how, how many I did. Do you recall if it was six? I don't recall. I'm assuming at some point that after escorting a suspect out of your house, you went back into your house? Yep. And what did you do from that point? When I escorted the suspect out and he gave me the jacket and the phone back, I went right inside, locked the door, and I don't remember exactly what I did. I think I stood in there and looked outside because I wanted to see whatever was going on, see either the suspect get into an Uber and leave or see um, the police get him in cuffs. And it was a matter of a minute later, you came, or the suspect came and was knocking on my door again to come back inside and look for the ID. When uh, when asking for your phone and your jacket back, did you was there any resistance on the part of the suspect, or did they just uh, maybe a few seconds to finish up their phone call, but they gave it back as soon as I asked for it. And you stated at one point going back in your house to look for the ID and wasn't able to find the ID? Yeah, the suspect came back after I escorted him out of my house, came back like about a minute later asking to come back inside and look for his ID. And I said, no, I'll look for it for you. So I was looking for his ID. I didn't let him back inside. And you didn't find any ID when you looked? No, I did not find any ID. Did you find anything unusual? No. After um, seeing uh, reports on the news and, and, and things of the like, did you come into any more information at that point? Objection. Grounds? Vague. Sustained us to the phone with a question. <clears throat> did you learn anything from news reports that you didn't know that evening? Uh, yes. After the fact, I learned of the suspect's criminal. Well, That's, I guess. Sorry. We're not going to go there. Okay. Um, I learned the name of the suspect at my house. I learned what that suspect was put into cuffs for at my house. And I, I learned what vehicle he drove and the details of the incident. Did you observe the suspect in the vehicle at any time? Uh, no. 
Did you notice any vehicles parked in the area that you hadn't seen before? No. You made reference to uh, briefly speaking with neighbors at that time? Yeah, uh, when I was escorting the suspect out of my house, the neighbor said, are you guys looking for that guy? And up to that point, I had not, I had no information of a person that he should be looking for. So I said, no, this might be him. Do you know what they were referring to at that, at yeah. that moment? Yeah, my neighbor was at the parade, um, and he was talking about the person driving the vehicle through the parade. And you knew all that at that moment? No, I I didn't learn about that until the police told me after the fact. Um, I, I didn't know what he was referring to when he said, are you guys looking for that guy? I didn't know anything about anything particular, but just that somebody's looking for a guy. And so then that's what led me to believe that the suspect be, in my house may be the person. It would be fair to say at that time, at that moment, you didn't know what they were referring to. That would be fair to say, correct. Did you have any other uh, interactions with those neighbors that evening? Yes. Uh, they called me after I got done doing my reports with the police, and I explained to them why there was so much police presence at my house afterwards and that um, that the suspect was arrested at my house or at my front porch. And did they at any time... Uh did they at any time say anything to you about seeing a vehicle or having knowledge of a vehicle at that time? Yeah, Greg, my next door neighbor, saw the red vehicle running over people. And he saw that? He told you that he saw that? Yeah. He told me after I had, I don't know exactly what time, maybe 6.30 p.m. that night when I called him after the fact. After I knew what had happened, then Greg told me that he had seen what had happened. A lot of my neighbors were at the parade. Do you know if they gave any uh, reports to law enforcement at that time? I don't know that. The officers that arrested the suspect at your at your home that evening did. Did you see your neighbors speak with any of those law enforcement officers? I didn't see them, no. Speak with them, no. And you stated that they told you what they saw. Any reason why they wouldn't speak with law enforcement, seeing as how they were right there in the area? Objection. Grounds. All the speculation. Sustained. So would it be safe to say you were pretty well informed that you would be testifying in this matter? Um, I didn't know. I knew that it was... Likely, I didn't know until I got the subpoena letter. And when did you receive that subpoena? I'm going to say September, maybe, maybe end of August. And that was received by, it was sent by the district attorney's office? Yes. You recall the name? No. After receiving the subpoena, did you uh, follow up with the district attorney's office? Um, they said that they would be emailing me with more details, and I waited until I got the initial email before I did any following up with the district attorney's office. And were those emails, were those emails uh, pertaining to testifying in this matter? Yes. <laughs> I 
Have you yourself filed any claims in this matter? Uh, no. Have you yourself seen or read any complaint in this matter? No. <laughs> Would you yourself can consider yourself an injured party in this matter? No. Are you aware of who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. <coughs> Sustained. Would it be fair to say that you followed the reporting on this incident? I. Uh, Initially, yeah, I watched the news and followed the reporting on it. Uh, initially? Well, like, I I'm, haven't been following the trial, but I was following the initial reports back in November of last year. So pretty much right when the incident happened is what you followed? Correct. you know, the following week or so, or two weeks. You ever hear who the plaintiff was in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Have you yourself ever had any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. <laughs> Grounds. Relevance. Sus sustained. Do you, are, do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Okay. Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall how much you sold the ring footage for? Objection. Grounds. <coughs> Relevance. Overruled. He may answer. I believe gross, it was a little over 23000 But after taxes, and we donated a lot, so we, we saw a lot less than that afterwards. Would it be fair to say that's quite a, quite a nice profit? Objection. Grounds. It's Sustained us to the form of the question. And would that be the price just for one, uh, one of the ring footages, or in total, all, all that you sold? That was the total. Yeah, the four. I, like I said, I don't know how that worked. We, that was just the kickbacks that we got from working with the. So yeah, I guess all of it, all four footage that was distributed to the news. Do you recall which station that was? Which news station? I mean, I think it was like most of the NBC, ABC. So it was multiple. CBS. Yeah, I mean, I don't recall all of them. No, I don't exactly which ones it was. I don't know. So it'd be fair to say it was pretty much the all the standard news stations. Yeah. Do you recall if that included TMZ? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Um, sustained. You've made your point. You can move on. No 
for friendly questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Please. Thank you. Mr. Ryder, do you have your phone on you right now? Overruled. He may answer. I don't. I gave it to a gal that let me in here. She's got it, though. While we're waiting on that, you yeah. mentioned uh, you checked your phone this morning to confirm that you still have the voicemail we've been talking about, right? Yes. Yes. <coughs> you question him about it. It's proper. If we, I'm referring to, I'm referring to the use of the phone. What is the? We phone haven't gotten there yet, sir. You're premature. You may answer. You did check. Yeah, I did. If we were to provide your phone to you here today, do you think you'd be able to find that voicemail? Objection. Overruled. He may answer. Yes. Do you think you'd be able to play it on speakerphone for everybody to hear? Objection. What is the relevancy? Overruled. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, there's a way to also play it through the technology. Objection. What is the relevancy? Uh, could I have a bailiff, please? You can unplug it from the charger. It's mm -hmm. probably to the witness. Objection. What Thank is you. the relevancy? It's relevant, sir. You cross examine him about it. Thank you. We are cross examining him about the question, Mr. not Brooks. Playing the phone. Please, I made my ruling. So is that is that a judicial <laughs> determination? Huh. Go ahead. You may ask your next question, Attorney Witchell. Uh, please open up your phone and let me know when you find the voicemail. Still pulling up right now. Sure. You followed instructions and turned your phone on, phone off before you came into court. Objection. Overruled. He may answer. Leading. Yes, I turned the phone off before court. Okay. Uh, okay. which I presume while he's loading that you're not offering the voicemail for the truth of the matter asserted, but simply to substantiate that he received a call. Yes. The jury will be instructed in terms of what is said in that voicemail not to consider it for the truth of the matter asserted, but just simply to substantiate the voicemail was received. And part of that request, Judge, would be to include the time that the voicemail was left and the number from which it came. Yeah, objection, what is the relevancy of that? Um, the objections noted, and you may ask the witness those questions. You might as well ask about the video studio. We'll get to those. How much longer do you have? With the five, five minutes. All well, right. I don't know how long this voicemail is. With that caveat. All right. Please continue. It's okay. Twenty-nine second voicemail. Okay. Can you tell us uh, what phone number that voicemail came from? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. He may answer. The voicemail came from one, so, so plus one or whatever, so 414-610-2153. Can you tell us what time that voicemail came in? Yeah. Overall, you may answer. 527 p.m. on November 21st. Of 2021? Of 2021. Objection leading. Overall, his answer may stand. And Your Honor, at this point, I'd ask uh, to allow the witness to play that voicemail using speakerphone. And if that doesn't work great with the audio system, then we can try the, the plugging in option. Sure. Once again, the jury, again, will only consider this not for the truth of the matter, what's asserted in that voicemail, uh, but simply to substantiate that it was received. Go ahead. Objection. Noted. Overruled. Yes, Mr. Ryder. I'm just, I don't know what's going on. I'm at work. I work at Trader. And my son, that was my son who used your phone. Oh, sorry. So I'll, I'll restart it. I was using the wrong yes, mic. Mr. Ryder. I'm just, I don't know what's going on. I'm at work. I work at Trader. And my son, that was my son who used your phone. And he's calling. I don't know what's going on. I'm just trying to see if he got the lip or what because the guy is in a white guy charger. I can apparently the lift driver switch cars and I didn't get the message. 
So I'm just trying to find out what the hell is going on. So I'm just, just want someone to just call me and tell me something because I don't know. And then that's the end of the voicemail? Yes. And you didn't uh, contact the person who called you and left that voicemail after the fact, did you? Jason, he asked and answered and crossed. Um, overruled, he may answer. No, I never, I never contacted her. Okay. The videos that we played in court today, those four videos, exhibit 75, 77, 78, and 79. You turned all those videos over to the police, is that correct? Objection leading. Um, sustained us to the form of the question. To whom did you turn those four videos over? Uh, I emailed them to Officer, I believe it was Officer Lilling. There was a Rebecca Carpenter out of Eagle PD that wanted it, and I may have emailed it to somebody with West Dallas PD, uh, but for sure Waukesha Police Department all got it that night. And while you've got your phone in front of you, are you able to access your call log? Um, yeah. Objection sure. leading. Overrule. Can you go back to November 21st of 2021? Okay. Um, can you see what number Mr. Brooks dialed that day using your phone? Objection leading. Overruled. Objection. I don't consent to being caught that name. Um, so my call log didn't save back that far. My voicemails did, but my call log, I've made so many calls since then that it didn't, I didn't save that. I think that. I think the police definitely saved that number when they were at my house that night, though. Do you recall if it was the same phone number that you received that voicemail from? Objection speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. I don't recall for sure, no. Okay. The videos that you released to the media, did you release anything to the media that you didn't also provide to the police? Objection. Overruled. No, everything that was released to the media was already released to the police department. Did you alter those videos or the audio that goes with them in any way when you released them to the media? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. No, I never altered any of them. What about when you sent them to the police? Objection leading. Overruled. No, never altered them. Were you aware at the time that Ring is a, a subscription service? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, we pay subscription for it. And there's a cloud account that goes with that, is that right? Objection leading. S um, sustained us to the form of the question. I think this is a pretty foundational question necessary well, to develop the testimony. You're probably right, and there is, it can be, some leading questions all, are allowed, but just rephrase that one, please, and we'll go from there. Okay. Where do the videos go aside from your phone? Objection speculative. Oh, well. um, there, there's an app on my phone that I was able to save and download off the app onto my phone. So there might be, a, I'm pretty sure that there's a Ring Cloud, that Ring, mm -hmm. the company Ring can probably access the footage, but I, I'm not, I was never notified that they have access to it or anything like that. If someone did want to access those videos through Ring, were you aware at the time that someone would have been able to double check and make sure that you didn't fudge with that video? Objection, Lee. Um, overruled if you're able to answer. Um, yeah, I mean, Ring could, if we needed to get Ring to validate that it's, if, that it's correct, they would be able to do that. Okay. When Mr. Brooks first knocked on your door, were you planning to sell those videos? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. The witness may answer. Objection, speculative. It's not speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Objection, hearsay. It's not hearsay. Go ahead. Uh, no, I had, I had no idea what was going to happen after that. What about after you let him in the back door and gave him a sandwich and a jacket? Were you, was Objection. this all part of a plan at that point? Objection leading. Overruled, he may answer. No, there's no plan to, to get footage to sell or anything like that, no. You simply provided those videos to law enforcement and the media. Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. I don't have anything else after the fact. All right. Thank you. Uh, you may step down. It's a little after 12, 12.09. Uh, we will take our uh, lunch break. Um, we went a little bit longer, uh, so I'm going to take um, about a 90-minute lunch break uh, today. 
So all rise for the jury. We are in recess. I'll see everyone at about 1.40.
Thank you, everyone. Be seated. We are back on the record in State versus Brooks. Appearances are as they were before. Um, I know this morning I mentioned I would uh, mention to the jury about Exhibit 15. As I recall going back in my memory about how that exhibit was um, received, I believe I already told the jury it is received or was received subject to for their testimony, so I don't know that I need to tell them again that it's received, and it would be my inclination to just simply let it be. We've noted it uh, outside the presence of the jury, but that's how I intend to handle that. Agreed. Thank you, Judge. Okay. I believe all of our jurors, well, they're all back, of course, but um, they're ready to go, and so when we bring them out, um, the state should be prepared to call the next witness. Okay, very good. Then bring the jury out, please. You didn't call it that name that you started with. I don't know if the audio is on. Audio is on, and I called the case. I actually didn't specifically refer to you, but I did say State versus Brooks. But in any event, your objection is noted for the record, and we'll continue with testimony. Will you be addressing subject matter jurisdiction? Is that a judicial determination not to answer, Your Honor? So is that a tacit agreement? jurisdiction has yet to be proven for the record. Everyone, please be seated. State have the next witness, please. Thank you. The state calls Officer Rebecca Carpenter. <coughs> Good afternoon, Officer. If you would please make your way to the witness stand on my right up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A, Carpenter, C A R. P E N T E R. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Officer, how are you employed? Uh, on the day of the parade, I was working a shift for the Village of Big Bend Police Department, sir. Is that who still employs you? Yes. Anybody else? Yes. I'm also a patrol officer for the town of East Troy, and I'm the assistant chief for the Village of Eagle. How many years have you spent in law enforcement? I was appointed to the Milwaukee Police Department in March of 1991. 
And when did you come out here to the Waukesha County jurisdictions that you mentioned? Uh, I retired from the Milwaukee Police Department as a sergeant in November of 2017, and uh, the first department I got into policing again with was the town of East Troy in May of 2018. You already made reference to the parade. Were you working uh, on duty as a law enforcement officer on November 21st of 2021? Yes, sir, I was. Um, overruled, and you may answer. Yes, I was. Were you aware that day that the Waukesha Christmas Parade was taking place? Actually, I was not. Did you at some point become aware that there was a parade in downtown Waukesha? Objection leading. Overruled. You yes. may answer. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, I did. How did you go about learning that information? Um, I heard over the radio channel that Big Ben monitors, which is not the same radio channel that the parade was on. Um, I heard a broadcast that there had been shots fired. What did you do in response to hearing that broadcast? In response to that particular broadcast, I started paying closer attention. And then what happened? Um, squads on my channel, which is a Waukesha County channel, um, started to say that they were placing injured people in the backs of their squads and driving them to the hospital, which is a highly unusual circumstance. What did you do when you learned that information? I started, uh, I started driving toward downtown Waukesha. Did you get there? I did. What happened then? Uh, initially, I went to the parade route and uh, I talked to a few people around injured people and determined that I wasn't really able to be of help there because they were all back injuries and I can't, in a squad, I can't help with that. So what did you do next? I answered a call on the radio that said there was a man going door to door on Elizabeth Street asking to use people's phones to call an Uber. Did you go to look for that man? I did. Where did you go? Uh, I responded to Elizabeth Street and I parked my squad uh, on Elizabeth and West. Where did you go from there? Uh, I got out and partnered up with two other officers and we decided that we would walk the street and look for this person. Were you wearing a body-worn camera at the time? Yes, sir, I was. Where was that device affixed to your person? Uh, the control box was on my chest and the particular model of body-worn <coughs> camera that I was wearing had um, a lens that I was wearing affixed to my collar. Your Honor, let the record reflect that the witness has held up her right hand in a circle uh, and pointed it towards uh, about her collarbone, her right collarbone. The record will so reflect. Was that device also equipped with a microphone? Objection yes. leading. Overruled. Yes, sir. And that microphone was synced up with the video? Yes, sir. Do you know whether your device was activated as you were walking down Elizabeth Street that, that yeah. afternoon? It was. Overruled, and her answer may stand. May we please display for the witness only exhibit number 80. Go ahead. It will come on the monitor in front of you. Do you see a video on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. We're going to play the first five or ten seconds of that just to see if you recognize it, okay? All right, we've played six seconds. Do you recognize that video? I do. What is it? It is my body camera video of walking down Elizabeth Street. From November 21st? Yes, sir. Leading. Um, I will um, overrule it, um, and the answer may stand. Is this video and the associated audio 
accurately reflect what happened that night as you saw it? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, sir. I move Exhibit 80 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Let me see. Um, overruled. Uh, exhibit 80 is received. Permission to publish is granted. For the record, please tell me the total length. It is a five-minute video. Thank you. Go ahead. We will start at the beginning. We're going to play it with audio, and we will pause at certain points, and I'll point out the timestamps when we pause. So we'll start from the beginning, please. <laughs> Paused at 53 seconds. A few moments earlier in the video, we saw what appeared to be a handgun. Does that sound right to you? Yes, sir. Who was the person holding that handgun? That was me. And who were, well, let's see, let me strike that. Um, I want to direct your attention to the top right corner of the screen here. There appears to be some type of timestamp. Do you see that? Jason Lee. Overruled. I do, yes. Do you know if that. <coughs> Is an accurate uh, military time timestamp? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. And it, that does not accurately reflect the time it occurred, no. So it was not 11 11 p.m. at the time this video was recording. Objection leading. Oh, sustained as to the form of the question. Do you know approximately what time it was that this video was recorded? I know that I initially began to respond to the scene at about 20 minutes to 5, and I would be guessing about how much time elapsed, but I would say it wasn't more than a half hour or 40 minutes to this point. Okay. The person uh, who was depicted in the video at this point, at 53 seconds, uh, that's what Describe where in the video you first saw that person. Objection leading. Overruled. I first saw him uh, standing on the porch. And what, if anything, did you see that person doing when you first saw him? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. He appeared to be rather agitated. Why do you say that? Objection leading. Overruled. It's not leading. You may answer. He was moving back and forth on the porch and gesturing. <coughs> do you recall what you were wearing that evening? I do. What? The exact same set of clothing that I'm wearing today. Including long sleeves? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled. <coughs> Did this person, depicted at 53 seconds, uh, draw your attention in any way based on what he was wearing? Yes. Why? Uh, it was chilly out, um, lower 40s, upper 30s, and he was in a t-shirt, jogging pants, and no shoes. We can resume playing here at 53 seconds, please. Thank you. Feel more right. You guys don't want your name on it, man? No. Okay, lads, with us. Okay, okay. Paused at one minute and four seconds. Um, what did we see in that portion of the video? That was a sandwich. Where did that sandwich come from? His, his right pants pocket. The subject on the ground is? Yes, sir. Okay. Please resume at 104. Thank you. 
Robert 277. We paused at 1 minute and 14 seconds. Did you at some point ask the subject depicted in the video at 114 to identify himself by name? Go ahead. I did. What was that person's response? He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. Do you see Mr. Brooks in the courtroom today? I do. Can you point him out for us by telling us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? He is seated at the defense table wearing a dark colored suit and striped tie and a mask over his face. Just to be thorough, Your Honor, could we please have Mr. Brooks remove his mask momentarily? Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Go ahead. Now that Mr. Brooks has removed his mask, does that change anything about your testimony today? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, you're leading. You may go ahead and answer. That's Daryl Brooks. Can we please play from 114? There's multiple. Paused at one minute and twenty three seconds. <clears throat> Sitting on the witness stand today, do you acknowledge that Mr. Brooks has a short haircut? Objection. I don't consent to be called that name. He's leading. Um, sustain this to the form of the question, please. How would you describe Mr. Brooks's haircut today? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Oh. Sir, I understand your objection. Please do not interrupt with that further so that the questioning of the witnesses may continue. You may answer. If you say that name, I'm objecting. And the jury will disregard the objection if it's solely for the name purposes. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Brooks has his hair cut close today. What about when he took his face mask down? Did you notice his facial hair? Objection leading. Overruled. He does have facial hair. Did you notice anything different about his facial hair <coughs> today versus in the video? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. That is also trimmed closer. Does the hairstyle and the facial hair hairstyle here in court today uh, give you any pause or concern <laughs> over whether or not it's Mr. Brooks in the video? Objection. Go ahead and answer, please. No, not at all. Let's resume playing at 123. Objection noted for the record. I just used somebody's phone to call for me. That's all. Oh, okay. That's what I need to have. We'll mail 26 to blackmail and red short leash. I'll tell you what. If everything turns out to be on the up and up, life will be good and you'll be on your way, all right? Yes. I got it, guys. I got it. Suspect, I presume? Unknown. Ask him. Ask him if he knows. He was on the porch here. Yeah, I was using his phone. Bell, what's your location? I was using his phone. You're holding the WMH drone, loading her down. I call my friend. Any squads available for a transport? Just give me a lift. That's all. I was just using his phone. Sarah, this is Schwartz. I'm leaving WSC. Where do you need me? Can I just sit up? I'm sorry. Everybody's doing their phone. Can I please just sit up? Do you have any weapons on you? No, sir. What's your name, guy? 9209. I just told her my name. What is your name, Bruce? Yes, sir. What's your first name? Jordan. Jordan Brooks? Yes, sir. This matches the description of the guy that got called on who was going door to door over here. Yeah, I was trying to Where are your shoes, man? I was trying to use somebody's phone. Where are your shoes? My flip-flops is in his house. Paused at 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Uh, did you hear the last thing said by the suspect on the ground at this point? Objection yes. leading. Overruled. What did he say? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. He said, my flip-flops my flip is in his house. Do you know if any flip-flops or any other shoes of any kind were ever retrieved from the residence that this was taking place in front of? Objection speculative. Overruled. You may answer. I did go in the house and speak to the resident there and asked if he had left shoes or, or outer garments or, or anything like that. 
and he said that he had not. Can we please resume at the 249 mark? He was saying he, he just gave me a jacket. He's identifying soft fat, lighter skin, black male, dreadlocks, red shirt, blue jeans, no shoes. Yeah, I did, I did go to the house. I went to that house right there, right down the street, right here. Where are you coming from, man? I was coming from that uh, parade down here. Okay. I know a friend it's down here. My so you, I think that's a fabulous Stand idea. Up for me, bro. Uh, I can't, Mr. Brooks. Okay, I'll tell you what. No. Roll over on your butt. Okay, not yeah. you. Roll over on your butt. Ah. Roll up on your knees. <laughs> Roll over on your Roll up on your knees. Okay, okay. 500 block of Elizabeth. Stand up. No, 553. 553 Elizabeth. Ah, uh, my. What are you doing? Freaking uh, sweet. Oh. Back to here. Did I do something? That is yet to be determined. Of, sir. Of my squad, man. Okay. Is there anything I need to stick me, poke me, hurt? No, no, back. no, not at all, sir. Okay. Not at all. I don't have any weapons. Glad to hear it. Nothing like that. How did you get up over here, man? I was coming to see a friend. Yeah? yeah. Where, where's your friend? I don't know now. Woo. Spin your hand, spin your back your hand ah. for me. Ah. I had, yeah, you injured, I went, you injured at all, dude? Yeah. What hurts? When when they slammed me, my knee, I'm out, I already have an injury. Spread your feet for me. Okay, yes, yes, yes. yes. That's my ID. It certainly is. Yes. <laughs> I'm so cold. I bet you are. Paused at 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, officer, can you tell us what you and any other officers were doing in that brief portion of the video? Uh, walking him to a squad car so he could be placed inside since he was not dressed for the weather. What happened once you got to the squad car? Um, the officer whose squad he was going to be placed in uh, went through his pockets to make sure he did not have anything that would be dangerous. Okay. And do you know if anything was retrieved from his pockets? Yes. Objection. Overruled. Her answer may stand. There were no weapons, were there? Objection. No weapons. Overruled. Her answer may stand. What, if anything, do you recall being recovered from his pocket? Um, ID. Uh, some cards, uh, I believe there was a credit card in there, and a car key. Can we please play from the 430 mark? We're having some skipping issues, so let's pause it there and go back to 450, please. I'm sorry, what time? Uh, 450. Go ahead. Okay, we're at uh, 448. We'll play from here. I don't need to <laughs> see those last few seconds. Um, we can get them to work, I'm sure, if um, Mr. Brooks would like to see them. Could we please show for the witness only uh, exhibit number 176? Do you recognize the photograph on the screen in front of you? I do. What does it depict? It is uh, still taken from my body cam footage. Those are my hands, and in my hands are the property that was taken from Mr. Brooks, you can see the officer's back at the open door of the squad and uh, Mr. Brooks' leg in the light there where he's sitting in the squad. Your Honor, I would move Exhibit 176 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection, Your Honor, see. Um, Exhibit 176 has received permission to publish as granted. The objection is overruled. 
And while we're waiting for the screens uh, to activate for the jurors, I'll ask you, Officer Carpenter, do you know what happened to the objects that are in your hands in that exhibit? Yes, I, I gave them to the officer uh, whose car <coughs> he, uh, Mr. Brooks was sitting in. You don't know the identity of that officer? I don't. There was, there were a lot of officers from a lot of different jurisdictions. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. That's all you have? All right, thank you. Cross, please. Yes. At one point you stated uh, the suspect was wearing jogging pants. That be fair to say? Yes, sir. Were the jogging pants or blue jeans? They were soft pants. They were not blue jeans. Can we show uh, Exhibit 80 again? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Thank you. Can you f fast forward it a little bit? I'm not going to be sure exactly where the, to pause it at. Can you fast forward just a little bit? Can you zoom in a little bit? And play a few more seconds. Would that mess the zoom up? Would it still be zoomed in or would it go back out? It'll stay zoomed on that. Oh portion of the screen. Okay. Pause. We're at uh, 55, yeah. You would describe those pants as jogging pants or soft pants, as you say? Yes. stated that when you parked your car and uh, when you parked your squad on Elizabeth and West you um, hooked up with two other officers yes and those officers had long guns yes um, can you explain what a long gun is a uh, shoulder weapon rifle or shotgun. You recall if it was a rifle or, or a shotgun? I did not examine either weapon closely. Are you done with this exhibit, sir? And you 
made reference to finding uh, sandwich credit cards and things of that nature in in the, uh, the pants. Correct. I found the sandwich while you were laying on the ground. And you also stated that you found a credit card and things of that nature. In fact, would it be fair to say that that's what was in your hand on Exhibit 176? Do you need the exhibit to answer? Do you recall? There were, I don't, thank you. Um, there were what appeared to be credit cards and ID and a car key. And they were in your hand, correct? They were. So would, it, so would it be fair to say you also found those and not just a sandwich? I did not pull that stuff out of your pocket, sir. That was a different officer. I did hold it while he finished searching you, sir. So. I'm sorry to threw me off. So you obtained that uh, the credit cards and uh, and all that from a different officer. Yes. Did you find anything else on your person? I was not the person searching you. Aside from. Uh, the sandwich while you were on the ground. So as far as your search, you, you just found a sandwich? Correct. And at the time, do you recall why the suspect was being detained? Yes. And what, what was the reason? Because you matched a description that was broadcast over the police radio of a suspect involved in the parade incident. In this report, did you write it yourself or uh, did another officer? I wrote it. Do you recall writing that the suspect was being detained for investigative purposes? Yes. Any reason why you wouldn't state what those purposes were in the report? Yes. Because at the time we had contact with you, I was not fully aware of the circumstances. Well, would it be fair to would it be fair to say that you just stated why the suspect was being detained? That I just stated why this, I'm sorry, what was the question exactly, sir? You just, would it be fair to say that you just stated when, when asked why was the suspect being de detained at that moment? You at answered, that moment. Yeah, yes. at, at that moment that you, you detained the suspect. You stated because they matched the description of someone involved in the parade. Yes, sir, that's correct. But then you stated that at the you just stated that at the time you didn't you weren't fully aware. I knew that people had been hurt. I knew 
that shots had been fired. I did not know how many people were hurt. I did not know by what mechanism people would be hurt. I did not know the magnitude of the injuries. I just knew that something violent had happened. So it would be fair to say you you weren't in the known of a lot of information at that point. That's true. Grounds. Um, overruled. Her answer may stand. Would it be fair to say that you were being heard in Exhibit 80 stating that if everything was on the up and up, you would be on your way? Yes, sir, that's correct. That was me. So would it be fair to say that was an inaccurate statement if the suspect fit the description of something that happened in the parade? Not at all. <clears throat> and what do you mean by not at all? I mean, sometimes people look like someone who did some, something and turn out not to be that person. But that was not the case here. So as far as you knew at the time, it could have been mistaken identity. It could have been, but it was not. Well, at the time, it would be fair to say at the time you didn't know. At the time, I did not know. Did you give the suspect any of that information? Objection. Grounds. I'm not sure what information he's talking about. Sustained us to the form of the question. It's vague. Did you give this did you give the suspect any information on why they were being detained? I said actually it wasn't me that said that. It was another officer that said that, and I can't tell you who it was because I don't know. While you were being put in the car. You were informed you were being detained for investigative purposes, which is a stand, uh, an answer that's appropriate for the circumstances. So it would be fair to say that that's not really all that informative? I did not have a lot of information to give you, sir. Keep saying you. Who are you referring to? You, Mr. Brooks. Daryl Brooks, seated at the defense table. Any reason why you wouldn't tell a suspect why they're being detained? <laughs> Essentially being that if you take someone into custody, they should know why they're being taken into custody. Wouldn't you agree? I can't give you information that I don't have. And I wouldn't want to tell you the wrong thing. That wouldn't be fair. So why would a suspect be detained without any information, to your knowledge? Objection. Grounds and answered. Um, also calls for speculation, vague. Sustained us to the form of the question. <coughs> so would it be fair to say that you can detain a suspect without them knowing why they're being detained? Objection. This Grounds. calls for a legal analysis, not factually relevant. No. Sustained us to the form of the question. to say you initially responded 
to the 500 block of Elizabeth because of a report of, I guess you, I guess you would call it a trespassing report. I would more put it under the heading of suspicious behavior under the circumstances. So is that why you were initially dispatched to that area for suspicious behavior? Yes. Do you recall when you got the report of shots fired? I believe that was one of the first things I heard over the radio before I was even there. Do you recall ever um, finding out where the shots fired came from? Eventually I did. Do you recall in your reading report <clears throat> writing that when you had uh, uh, arrived at Elizabeth and West and parked your squad and began to walk down the street that you had your firearm in your hand? Yes. And was that because of the call of shots fired? Or did you feel unsafe at the time? That's because there were shots fired and I did not know by whom. <coughs> did you get a report of anyone hit by the shots? At that time, no. I did not know one way or the other if anyone had been hurt. Did you? Had been hit. I knew people were hurt. Did you? Do you recall um, the area of, of where the shots fired? Was that the, the, the general area? The general area? Somewhere in the vicinity of the parade. Is Elizabeth and West in the general area? It's a few blocks away. <coughs> and you did state you didn't find any weapons on the suspect, right? Correct. You find any shell casings or? No. Do you have any reason to believe that the shots came from the suspect? I did not know who had done shooting. I had heard a report of shots fired. I did not know by whom, as I've said, sir. Any reason to believe that the shots came from the suspect is, is what I'm asking. I did not know. And you stated that upon seeing a suspect on the porch, that they were gesturing? Gesturing? Yes, sir. And you also stated that in your written report that it was in the upper 30s that evening with the brisk wind. Would that be fair to say? It was Pretty upper cold. 30s, lower 40s, somewhere right in there. It was cold. I was cold. Do you think that 
maybe maybe the gesturing was because the suspect was cold. Objection. Grounds. Calls for speculation. Um, overruled. She may answer if she's able. I didn't know. Do you recall checking the general area around the house that you found a suspect? Yes, sir. Did you find anything around the house? Uh, I guess I'm referring to where you wrote in your report you checked the likely path of travel. Yes, sir, I do recall that. No, we did not find anything. Do you recall checking the pockets of the coat worn by the suspect? Yes. Do you recall how the suspect obtained the coat? I recall what I was told. So it would be fair to say you weren't sure if you were only told this information. Would that be fair to say? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You you made reference to saying you, you only know what you were told. So it would be fair to say at that time you didn't know unless you were told. Didn't know what? How the suspect obtained a coat. I asked the resident of the house you were at. Actually, I believe he volunteered to me that he had given you a coat to wear. And you checked the pockets of the coat? Yes. And did you find anything? I did not find anything. At what point did you learn that uh, the suspect who was being detained would be arrested? At some point later. It was another officer's vehicle that the suspect was placed in, correct? Correct. <coughs> and when did you leave that scene? Not for hours. Why so long? 
because uh, when there is a crime scene that potentially spans blocks, everything needs to be searched for evidence. Uh, witnesses need to be located um, because once things are gone, things are gone. So it has to all be done right the first time. Did you write your report that, that evening? I believe I wrote it the next morning. So it would be fair to say after you had learned a little bit more information, then you wrote the report? That would be true, yes. In the video, uh, Exhibit 80, the suspect gave you his name, right? That's correct. Is that right when you handcuffed him, if you recall? Right around that time, yes, sir. And did you talk to um, any other witnesses that, that evening besides uh, the owner of the home that you saw the suspect? No. In the hours that you stayed on Elizabeth, did you talk to any other witnesses at all? No, I, I uh, looked through a few yards and mostly maintained a perimeter for a search. Do you recall why you looked through a, a few yards? Searching for evidence. Do you recall what evidence you may have been searching for at that time? You know, a lot of times you don't know until you find it. So do you recall what, maybe you might have been looking for a weapon or anything like that? That would have gotten my attention, yes, absolutely. Did you find any weapon? No, sir.
did you learn any knowledge of uh, any ring video footage that evening? I don't recall if I viewed the footage that evening or the following day. I did at some point view that ring footage, yes. So you were, you were aware that night that it was ring footage? I believe I was aware of it that night. I don't believe I watched it, but I, I can't say with certainty. And do you recall initially responding to uh, Clinton Street and Broadway first? Yes, sir. And do you recall why you responded to that location first? To see if I could help anyone. About how long did you stay there before responding to Elizabeth? <clears throat> Just a few minutes. No further questions. All right, thank you. Any redirect? Uh, referring specifically the to the time that you placed the handcuffs on Mr. Brooks, do you remember that time frame? Yes, sir. I don't know if you can say to be called that name. Oh, overruled? You may answer. Thank you. Yes, I do. Do you recall how Mr. Brooks ended up on the ground as that was happening? I do. Could you tell us about that? Jake Shane saw, saw in the video. Overruled. The witness may answer. We instructed him to put his hands up and then to get down on the ground. Did he comply with those instructions? He did. Did you or any other officer have to put hands on Mr. Brooks to get him on the ground? Objection. Speculative. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. <coughs> no, sir, we did not. After he was on the ground, that's when the handcuffs went on? Objection. That's correct. Leading. Overruled. She may answer. Your answer again was? That's correct. At any point after the handcuffs went on, did you or any other officer throw Mr. Brooks to the ground? Objection leading. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. We did not. How did you treat Mr. Brooks as he moved him from his prone position on the ground to the squad car? Objection. Overruled. The answer. As the video shows, um, he was instructed let's call it the path of least resistance, to get up off of a prone position eventually to his feet with a minimum of discomfort. Did you successfully achieve that objective? Objection, speculative. I'll rephrase. Can you, are you able to answer? Yes. Go ahead. In as best as one can stand a person up when they have their hands handcuffed behind their back, yes. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down. Statement calls next witness. Thank you. The state calls Officer Garrett Luling.
Good afternoon, officer. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is up a riser to my right. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. If you would please state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Sure. First name is Garrett. Last name is Luling. First name is spelled G-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. My last name is spelled L-U-L-I-N-G. Thank you. Go ahead, Attorney Offer, your witness. Thank you, Judge. Uh, good afternoon, Officer Luling. Good afternoon. Sir, I want to direct your attention to the date of November 21 of 2021. And uh, you were aware of the Waukesha Christmas Parade taking place that afternoon, is that correct, sir? Objection, we correct, I was working. Um, oh, hold on, um, understand it's leading, there is some leeway when it's just laying foundation, so it's overruled and the witness may answer and the answer he provided may stand, go ahead. Correct, I was assigned to work the Christmas Parade. All right, at some point in time, were you aware of uh, injuries to those involved in the parade, sir? Objection, leave. Yes. Overruled. Make sure you make a roll on the objection, please. Sorry. And at some point uh, later that evening, were you aware of a suspect being in, taken into custody in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? Objection, Lee. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. All right. I want to direct your attention to that time frame, please. Did you respond to that area, sir? Yes. Where did you go? I traveled, I was initially parked setting up a perimeter near the area of Southwest Avenue in Wood um, when I heard a specialist Klein come over the air indicating that there was a subject going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street and then traveled north and to Elizabeth Street which is right off of Southwest <coughs> Avenue, correction, Northwest Avenue at that point and I traveled westbound on Elizabeth Street looking for the subject. What did you see when you arrived in that area? Initially, as I came to the area, I observed an officer from the village of McGuanago, an officer from the Big Bend Police Department, as well as an officer from the, Delphi the city of Delfield Police Department in the area. I traveled westbound spotlighting uh, residents in the general area looking for the subject. Initially, I didn't see anyone, um, so I made it to the end of the streets, at which point I began to double back. I briefly stopped and spoke with uh, some civilians in the area just saying, hey, if you see anyone, call the police department, let us know. And as I traveled back eastbound on Elizabeth Street in the 500 block, I observed the three officers from those aforementioned police departments uh, detaining one subject at gunpoint in the front lawn of 553 Elizabeth Street. You had uh, indicated there were people out and about C civilians? Yes, there was some people out on their porches or patios. Uh, I had my lights going on my, my squad, so that drew attention for people to kind of look out and call out to me as I was making a Y turn. Do you know about what time of day this was? Uh, not off the top of my head. It was, it was dark out, though. Okay. As in relation to when the incident at the parade occurred, to when you're arriving on Elizabeth Street. Can you give us a rough time frame? Um, leading. Overruled, you may uh, 45 minutes an hour okay. at the max. Okay. So when you roll up on 553 Elizabeth Street, tell me what you saw. So as I was coming back eastbound, I could see the lights from the other officers illuminating a subject on the ground. Uh, I immediately pulled up, parked my squad, got out and began running uh, to where the officers were and as I uh, came up to where they were in the front lawn area between the residence and the sidewalk they were in the midst of handcuffing and detaining a subject on the ground. The subject that was being handcuffed and detained on the ground, do you see that person in the courtroom here today? I do, yes. Are you able to identify him? Yes. Would you like him to remove his mask in order to do so, sir? Please. Okay. Mr. Brooks, if you please. Thank you. 
So the subject I saw was Daryl Brooks seated at the defendant's table wearing a dark colored suit with a gray shirt. And you said he was already on the ground in the process of being handcuffed, is that correct? <coughs> yes. Did you see any officer slam Mr. Brooks to the ground? No. Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. <coughs> no. Did you see any use of force directed towards Mr. Brooks by any police officer on the scene at that time? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. No. Did you approach Mr. Brooks? Yes. Did you speak to him? Yes. What did you say? I asked him to identify himself at that time. He said Brooks. I again asked him to identify himself. He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. And that's the name he gave you, identifying himself? Yes. Objection. And that's not what he says in the video. <coughs> um, overruled. Yes. All right. Did that name have any significance when you heard it, sir? <coughs> yes. Why? I knew prior to responding to that location that Officer Moss who had initially located the car, had uh, made a cursory check of the vehicle. During that time, he found documentation belonging to a Daryl Brooks. Okay. At some point, do you recall um, getting Mr. Brooks up off the ground? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Um, overruled, you may answer. Yes. Tell us what you remember at that point. Um, off, or Dale Brooks was picked up off the ground or assisted off the ground. He was then escorted to the front of my mark squad where I searched him. At this point, are you probably the only officer from the city of Waukesha Police Department on the scene? Objection, speculative. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, I was the only officer from the city of Waukesha at that time. And the other officers were providing mutual aid to the city of Waukesha Police Department? Objection, leading. Overrule the witness may answer. Yes. Being the squad from the city of Waukesha and the parade occurring in Waukesha, did you take custody of Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. Prior to placing him in your squad, was Mr. Brooks searched? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. Tell us what you remember about that, sir. So I searched Mr. Brooks during which time I found some cards in his right pocket that had his name on it, as well as a black Ford key. When you say some cards, what can you describe those further, please? Uh, debit or credit cards. All right. I'm going to show for you an item that's been marked as Exhibit 176. It's been previously admitted. I'd uh, ask that it be displayed for the jury again, Your Honor. Oh, permission granted. Objection. You see the photograph on the monitor in front of you, sir? Yes. Uh, do you see yourself in that photograph? Yes. Where are you? I am the officer with his back to the, the camera with police written across a fluorescent yellow and orange vest. Do you recall what you were doing at this point in time? Um, at that point, it looks like I'm buckling Daryl Brooks into the back of my squad. Right. placing him into the back of my squad. And you see uh, a set of hands on the right side of the photograph, sir? Objection leading. <laughs> Overruled. Yes. You see the objects that are being held in those hands, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. Is that consistent with what you just testified as to the items you removed from Daryl Bo Brooks before placing him in your squad? Objection. Overruled. You said to me and that name and it's... Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. It's a little blurry, but can you circle for us the uh, key that you indicated you found? With my finger, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. And because it's a little hard to see, can you describe that key as you recall? Hmm. As I recall, the key was a single key. I don't recall there being any keychain to it. Uh, it was a fob type that had some buttons and it had a Ford emblem on it that indicated that was a Ford key. Okay. What did you do with these items after you, uh, well, strike that. That's should ask a better question. Did you eventually get these items back from the officer who was holding them? Yes. And what did you do with them? Uh, I took custody of them until they were ultimately turned over to Detectives Stern and Detectives Carpenter. All right. Do you remember Mr. Brooks asking you why he had been detained? 
objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Yes. You answer, sir. Yes. Do you remember specifically what he said? I recall that he had questioned why the police were handcuffing him or why the police were detaining him. Did you reply? Yes. What did you tell him? I told him that he was being detained as he matched a description of a subject involved in a crash in the downtown area. Did you say anything about the parade? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, officer. I don't have any other questions for you. Any cross? Yes. Go ahead. Do you recall speaking with uh, Officer Moss that evening? Not distinctly. There might have been some radio traffic between me and him at one point. So it would be fair to say that radio traffic, you guys spoke? I can't tell you if I had direct contact with him or if I just recall him airing particular pieces of information. Do you recall any particular bit of information that was aired by Officer Moss? You're going to have to be more specific. Do you recall Officer Moss airing that he had spoken with a potential eyewitness who indicated that they had observed numerous suspects run from the vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Grounds. Um, overall, the witness may answer. I recall Officer Moss airing that to the officers responding in general that there may have been more than one suspect that had ran from the vehicle. And do you recall if that if that aired information Wait a second, back that up. You just stated that there may have been any reason why the air information said it had been, that he had, had spoken to a potential eyewitness? Objection, hearsay, and Grounds. false or speculation as to the words of another person. Grounds. Sustained. Rephrase your question. Do you recall any air information of description? Yes. Do you recall what they were? Objection. Hearsay. Grounds. You're asking him the description of the suspect leaving the vehicle? Yeah, what, he, what he heard aired. Overruled. You may answer. I recall there being a description of a either a light-skinned black male or a po possible Hispanic male wearing a white shirt, as well as the potential of a white male with curly brown hair. Do you recall what you did after hearing that air information? Yes. What did you do? I responded to Officer Moss's general location, at which point he requested that a perimeter be set up. So I responded further south to set up a perimeter to attempt to keep those people within the confines of that perimeter. Do you recall what, uh, what general area that was? You're going to have to be more descriptive to what general area are we talking about here? Uh, the area the area where Officer Moss was. Officer Moss was at 338 Maple. Is that the area that you responded to? Generally, yes. What do you mean by generally? I was driving to the residence when he asked that a perimeter be set up. And do you recall where you set that perimeter up? Yes. And where was that? It was loosely around that residence as well as to the south and to the west. Which streets were to the south and to the west? Numerous streets. Well, I'm, I'm referring strictly to your perimeter that you set. Do you recall which street you set your perimeter? 
I want to say that I was probably the southernmost squad at that time, and I was at Southwest and Wood. I'm sorry, what was the second street? Wood. Thank you. While setting up your uh, perimeter, <laughs> did you receive any more information about the suspects who fled from the vehicle? It was all kind of at the same time. Do you recall being advised that the male black hat possibly fled southbound? and that the male white hat may have fled in the westbound direction? Your Honor, I Jack moved to strike. He's providing statements and facts that are not in evidence. They're based on hearsay. Um, the question was, did he recall being advised that? That was the question. Does he recall being advised? Still hearsay. Sustained. So who were you advised by? Officer Moss. And do you recall what you were advised? Objection. Hearsay. Sustain. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Hearsay. What's that hearsay? How did you end up being dispatched to the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? I heard another officer error that they were listening to Waukesha County Communications indicating that there was a person going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street. I'm sorry, you said you stated you heard that? Yes. Wouldn't that be like hearsay? Only if it's being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. If it's just explain what he did next, then no. That was the same question I asked before, Your Honor. <coughs> And upon arriving at Elizabeth Street, you stated that there was already a suspect being detained at the at the moment that you arrived. No. So, what did you observe when you got to the five hundred block of Elizabeth Street? I already explained that upon getting there, I traveled westbound on Elizabeth Street till it ended, at which point I turned around and came back. So when I initially got there, I didn't see anything. Did you observe, <clears throat> did you observe someone being detained at gunpoint? Not, a, not upon initially getting there, no. Not, not initially. Did, did at any time you observe someone being detained at gunpoint? 
Yes, I already said that. Do you recall what they had on? Yes. You stay for the record and for the jury what they had on? In a red t-shirts and blue jeans. Blue jeans. They, were they jogging? Jogging pants or blue jeans? Appeared to be blue jeans. And do you recall why the suspect was being detained at that at that time? Yes. And what do you recall about why they were being detained at that time? You were being detained for involvement in a crash in the downtown area. And upon <coughs> when the suspect was detained, do you recall do you recall stating that you were confident they were either the driver or passenger of the vehicle found at 338 Maple? No, I never said that. Did you give a report uh, about what happened that evening? Yes. Did you write it yourself? Yes. So I'm reading from your report right here that you just stated that you wrote. Do you recall saying, I was confident that Brooks was either the driver or passenger of the striking vehicle? That is in my report. However, you asked if I said that. I didn't say that. That's a more or less an internal dialogue with myself saying that I felt confident that you were the suspect, either the driver or passenger in that vehicle. So it would be fair to say at the time of your report, you were confident that it was more than one person in the vehicle? No. So why did you write the report in that fashion? I was confident that you were involved with that vehicle and with the crash in the downtown area. So would it be fair to would it be fair to say that you couldn't have written you could have written your report in that fashion instead of the fashion that you wrote it? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. As to the form of the question. Any reason why you were referred to a passenger? Yes. Initially, there was reports that multiple people fled from the vehicle from the area of the vehicle. And because of those reports is why you wrote your report in that fashion, or in the fashion that you wrote it. 
Objection has been answered. Argumentative. Grounds. Sustain this in the form of the question. So when you were, when you observed the suspect being detained at Elizabeth Street, at that time did you know the suspect's name? No. found a credit or debit card when uh, conducting a search? Yes. Do you, recall, do you recall where you found that credit or debit card? Your right pocket. Exhibit 176, where, where it shows um, someone holding the credit card. Um, was that you? Was what me? Holding the credit card. No. But you are the one that found it? Yes. What else did you find? A Ford car key, vehicle key. And where did you find that? Your right pant po pants pocket. Play uh, Exhibit 80 for the witness. Stay able to do that, please. The entire Can video you, or just a part of it? Um, I'm guessing around the four minute and <laughs> 50 or something, somewhere up in that area. That's the last 10 seconds, sir. Is that what you want? Yeah, somewhere up in that area. Take a look at it. Is that where you want us to start? Or farther back? Uh, a little farther back. Thank you, Miss Gussie. How about there? Uh, 436. A little farther back, I'm sorry. Maybe. Yeah, for wherever it's at right now, 409. Can you play it from there real quick? You want the sound I take it? Uh, 
I, I don't really think the sound is necessary. More, more so the visual. Okay. Playing from four fifteen. <clears throat> Do you remember this video? No, I don't. I didn't. That's not my body cam video. Pause. Well, go back like two seconds. Thank you once again is, for doing that. Is that this touch screen right? Is this right here the credit debit cards that you found? I can't tell what that is. Can you clear that? Madam Clerk, please and thank you. Thank you. Can you go back maybe two more seconds? I think it's a clearer shot. Just for the record, Your Honor, it's not that easy to just jump back two seconds. I mean, if he has a specific time, we can jump I mean, to a time. How would I know if I finally seen the, visit, the video once? Like, why is it that big of a deal? Can you play from right there? Right there. 435, Your Honor. 435. Now it's on 437. We started can you pause it, it at 4, 435. Right, it was started and then you said pause, and obviously it takes time to do that. So and the, the record should reflect that Mr. Brooks has drawn a circle around something on the still image. Go ahead, ask your question. The record should reflect on consent to that name. Ask your question, sir. Around the 435 mark, you can see um, who, whoever this is is holding is holding the, the credit card, debit card. Is that you? Objection. That assumes a fact, not in evidence, Your Honor. Sustained. <laughs> Re rephrase your question. Can you clear that? Madam Clerk, please, thank you. You said that you found a key. Where's the footage of you finding a key? I don't have a body cam, so there's not going to be video of my body cam. So if you were wearing your body cam, it would have depicted what you found during your search? No, the city of Oxford did not have body cams during this incident. So it would be fair to say there is no footage of you finding a key? I, grounds. It's argumentative and he's already said he was not wearing a body camera Actually, he can't he said, know possibly. It's speculation. He can't know possibly. Actually, he said the city of Waukesha didn't have body cams. He didn't say. Right. It, it sustained. It assumes facts not in evidence and calls for speculation on the part of this witness. And there's also lack of foundation as to this witness. The foundation is this mysterious key he said he found. Um, the jury will disregard that statement made by Mr. Brooks. It's not his time to testify. You will have an opportunity to do that later if you choose. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Yeah, clerk, you can take that off.
at any time that evening were you able to detain any other suspects? No. After the suspect was detained, do you recall how long you stayed at the scene? Which particular part of the scene? Where you had detained the suspect. At 553 Elizabeth Street? Correct. Off my best estimate, I was probably there for about 25 minutes. And what did you do in those 25 minutes? During those 25 minutes was time detaining you as well as briefly speaking with the homeowner and ultimately turning you back over to detectives. And what did you do from there? From there I went back into a perimeter position. Would that, would that be referring to the uh, perimeter that you, were, that you mentioned that you had set Yes. Uh, around the area of where Officer Moss was located? Yes. And how long did you stay at that uh, perimeter? I'm not 100% positive. Extended period of time. Do you recall why you were dispatched back to that perimeter? At that time, there was a possibility that there may be another party involved. So as the investigation was still ongoing and they're attempting to determine if there was another party involved, the perimeter was maintained so that no one could squeeze out through that perimeter and flee. Recall there being ring footage uh, of the of the residence of five five three Elizabeth Street. Yes. Did you view those? Uh, did you view the ring footage that evening? No. Did you view the ring footage at all? Yes.
Are you aware of what happened to the ring footage? A copy of the ring footage was emailed to me by the homeowner. And it was ultimately placed on property inventory at the Waukesha Police Department. Do you recall if it was multiple videos? It was, yes. Do you recall that about 1640 hours? I don't know, would that be 440? Yes, that's 440. Do you recall directing traffic at the intersection of Barstow Street and Carina? Yes. And do you recall Officer, hearing anything over the radio at that time? Yes, I do. Do you recall what that was? An officer had aired that you had driven around his barricade or into the parade route. <clears throat> you? What do you? Who do you refer to as you? You, Daryl Brooks. And you knew that at that time? Not at that time, no. So how would you say you? Throughout the investigation, it was determined to be him. <coughs> do you recall there? Uh, do you recall it being any other air information at that time? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Grounds. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter, sir, or for some other reason? Otherwise, for it's the, hearsay. For the truth of the matter, I'm asking him, does he recall what was aired on his radio? Well, then you're asking him to testify to hearsay, so it's sustained. Call an officer indicating that the vehicle was continuing westbound and possibly blaring his horn? Objection. Grounds? Same objection, Your Honor. He's attempting to testify and offering hearsay statements into the record. I'm not attempting to testify. Um, sustained. <coughs> Grounds for the sustain? For the reasons the state indicated. Do you recall? You can ask the witness if he heard any horns at that time. That would be different. <clears throat> but what someone else may have reported would be hearsay, if it's offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Well, I'm, I'm reading from the report that he wrote. That doesn't take away that it's hearsay. If it's in the report and someone else said it, it's actually double hearsay. Do you recall hearing about a vehicle blowing his horn? Objection. Grounds. Same objection, Your Honor. Um, overruled, he asked if this witness heard. That's how I heard the question. I think that's what you were asking. You yeah. mean at the... Said, did you hear about a horn? <coughs> what did oh. you hear, Your Honor? If the question was, did he, this witness hear a horn, then that witness may answer the question. <coughs> did he hear about a horn? That's different. That would be hearsay. So why don't you rephrase your question, sir? Did you hear a horn? No.
And, and just so we're clear, I assume when you when he that your question meant when he was at Barstow and Carina, because that's where he was positioned. Correct. Right? That's what you meant. Yeah. Is that was that your understanding? Yes. Okay. Very well. Next question. Do you have any other question, questions for yeah. this witness? Yeah. Any reason why it would be in your report that a vehicle was blaring its horn? Same objection, Your Honor. Grounds. So, assumes facts not in evidence. True. Calls for hearsay. Sustained. Have you read the complaint in this matter? No. Have you seen the complaint in this matter? No. You yourself file a claim in this matter? No. Know of anyone who filed a claim in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Uh, overruled. He may answer if he knows. No. <coughs> Do you recall whom subpoenaed you to testify here today? The state of Wisconsin via the Washoe County District Attorney's Office. And you say state of Wisconsin. Who who would you be referring to when you say state of Wisconsin? The entity that is the state of Wisconsin judicial system. So the state of Wisconsin is an entity to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Is the entity a living, breathing human? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant, argumentative, sustained. Next question. Do you know if the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this matter? Yes. An entity is the plaintiff? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Um, <coughs> sustained. It's also overly broad. You ever had a phone conversation? Objection. Irrelevant. Um, with the plaintiff? <laughs> <coughs> About this case? About this case. Overruled. You may answer. No. Have you ever seen the plaintiff in this case? Objection, Your Grounds. Honor. This entire line of questioning is completely irrelevant. Grounds. Um, sustain on relevance. Grounds. Next question, please. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any redirect? <coughs> no, nothing else. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. This will be a good opportunity to take a mid-afternoon break as well. I'll rise for the jury, please.
can step off. Thank you. We'll be in recess for 15 minutes. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you. Be seated. Before we bring the jury back out, if we could just maybe talk scheduling for a moment. We are back on the record and the audio's on, so that's good. Um, Attorney Opper, uh, where are you at for today? I presume you have probably another witness or so. Yes, we were just uh, discussing that as well, Your Honor. I have one more witness whom I believe will be shorter in duration, and then we would be prepared to start with another witness who is lengthier, uh, probably about an hour for direct examination. I'm sorry, probably about four hours because of the recorded interviews that need to be displayed to the jury. So we could either start that witness this afternoon and get some of it done and uh, finish with him in the morning or just start fresh with him in the morning. And then do we have the interpreter coming tomorrow? Yes, and we have, we have that interruption or pause in our case scheduled. Um, I'm told the interpreter would be ready or, excuse me, available anytime between 9.30 and noon. So um, maybe around the time of the mid-morning break, we would pause what we're doing in the state's case and turn to the defense witness. All right. And then, Your Honor, uh, <coughs> truthfully, at this point, we are probably on track to rest sometime on Wednesday. Uh, we've we've done good today. We're on schedule for today, but uh, especially if we have to interrupt with that defense witness tomorrow, um, we don't think we'll be able to finish until sometime on Wednesday. Okay, understood. Um, and have you been in contact with the witnesses that were subpoenaed by Mr. Brooks to let them know about when they will be needed? Yes, and we will need further direction on that from Mr. Brooks as far as what order he would like them in and when he wants them here. And again, uh, depending on how this shakes out, I think probably about this time tomorrow we'll be in better shape to know if we would perhaps get to defense witnesses Wednesday afternoon or just start Thursday morning with defense witnesses. Is he, if he lets us know the order he wants them in, uh, we can start making those arrangements on his behalf, but um, to not, right now they all know that they're essentially on call for you know more towards the end of the week. All right. Um, and if I, my memory serves, the witness who would be called out of order, is that Juan Marquez? Yes. All right. So you should probably be ready to have that person because that's when we have the interpreter available. Uh, tomorrow sometime. I presume you still want to call that witness? Yes. All right. And so just be prepared to do your direct when we can fit it in at the appropriate break and depending on where we end with witnesses tonight. And then if you would let the state know the order of your witnesses um, so we can have them come at different times so that they're not all here for days waiting to be called. With all respect, um, <coughs> The prosecution didn't tell me the, the order of their witnesses. Why do I have to tell them the order of mine? Because they're assisting you in getting them to court. They've served the subpoenas on your behalf. And as a courtesy to those witnesses, I need you to provide, um, I don't even care if it's the order, but if you say these three will be called in the morning, these three will be in the afternoon, that would be okay with me. I just wanna be able to tell those witnesses through the DA you three will be Wednesday afternoon, you three will be whatever the number is, will be Thursday morning and the rest Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, whatever it may be. I get what you're saying, but it's still, from from what I'm hearing from the prosecution, they're not sure exactly when they'll be resting their case. So I think they're trying to rest their case sooner rather than later, but they have some witnesses to get through, and what they're telling us is that that will be sometime on Wednesday, given the pause that they will take in their case to call Mr. Marquez so that he can be questioned by you uh, with the interpreter. So wouldn't it make more sense to to start calling my witnesses Thursday then? If no, you should be ready to go Wednesday afternoon. I'm not going to take a break for that. You should be ready to go. I mean, if we get done at 
four o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, that might be a different story, but it sounds like we should be able to uh, call witnesses. Of course, you uh, will need to let me know if you're going to give an opening statement. Um, you had deferred that, and that <coughs> could adjust some of the timing. But So I need you uh, to provide that order to the state uh, tomorrow when you come into court so that they I'm, can work with those witnesses. I'll probably say I'm not going to provide a specific order. I'm not going to do that. Well, then I, you need to tell I'm, which day like morning and afternoon and how many witnesses per. I'm not going to just bring them in um, all at the same time and make them wait. That's not, um, that would be a discourtesy to those witnesses who you are calling. So I want to, I want to have some idea of what your game plan is for them. I get that, but I'm still, I'm still confused. Um, I, I, just, I essentially didn't know who they was calling in order. Um, that's not really relevant at this moment, sir. So I need you to provide the order. I'm not going to provide and, the order. Or by what, start Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, uh, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, unless they're very short. Just keep in mind we generally have about, when we start at 8.30, we go till about noon. Uh, probably start up an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, after the lunch, so you have another couple of hours, so you should be able to know about how long you're going to question them and just um, give us who those are for each of those blocks. Uh, and then be ready for Mr. Marquez tomorrow. I'll be ready for that, but All I'll, right. probably, I'll probably have an idea of who I want to, who I think should come in, but I'm, I'm not going to provide an order. Well, if he wants our assistance, Your Honor, we will do that. Otherwise, he can be responsible for getting these witnesses here himself. You've got to cooperate with this process, or they're assisting you. Otherwise, you're going to be responsible for telling these witnesses when to come in. And so how am, how am I supposed to do that? Well, then you should cooperate with the state and their assistance to help you, sir. I'm, I'm not going to give a specific order. Sir, are you willing to provide the... The, who the witnesses are by half day. I just said that. All right, then that's what gonna, I need by tomorrow morning. I said morning. I'm not giving an order is that's what fine. I said. That's fine. I'm okay with that, and the state will be okay with that because I said they'll be okay with that. So We're okay, Judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So what about the, what's supposed to be going on today? How, how late do we plan to go today? Well, we'll have to see how long this witness lasts and if we can start the next witness. I, 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 4.35 o'clock, maybe even 5.30. We'll see. So, with that, let's bring the jury out. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction at some point? Not beyond what I've already addressed, sir. Would you address it? You didn't prove it. You didn't verify it. It's not verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction yet. It's not been proven on the record. <clears throat> That a judicial determination, Your Honor, that you're not going to answer that? Your request is noted for the record. I've already addressed it. Is it noted for the record? It should be noted for the record also. That's the type of degree. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. We already been riding. Wondering when we go get the answer to that subject matter jurisdiction, though. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Attorney Opera, you may call your next witness. Thank you. The state calls Officer Leha. Good afternoon, Officer Leha. If you would please make your way to my witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing, raise your right hand. My 
Clerk Teresa will swear, swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. And I should say the witness stand. I don't have ownership over it. But in any event, state your first and last names for the record. First name Draylon, last name Leha. Could you spell both? D-R-A-E-L-O-N, last name Leha, L-E-I-J-A. All right, thank you. Go ahead, your witness. All right, thank you, Officer Leha. Sir, I'd like to direct your attention to the evening of November 21, 2021. Were you working on duty that afternoon? Yes. All right. I should ask, where do you work? Uh, City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you been a police officer? A little over two years. Okay. So on that evening, uh, were you aware that the parade was taking place in downtown Waukesha? Yes, ma'am. Did you work the parade? No, ma'am. Do you recall what time it was when you came on duty, sir? Objection of relevancy. Overruled. Give me an answer. I believe it was a little after five. Were you scheduled to work that evening? Yes. Okay. And uh, around the time of 12 a.m. midnight, so now I think we're getting into the next day of November 22 of 2021, uh, were you asked to assist detectives at Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Yes, ma'am. Did you go to that location? I did. And did you meet with anybody there? Yes, ma'am. Jackson Leedy. Um, overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am. Who did you meet with? I met with Detective Jay Carpenter and acting detective at the time, uh, D Detective Stern. Did they uh, ask you to assist them in some fashion? Yes, ma'am. What did they ask you to do? I was tasked... Um, overruled, you may answer. I was tasked with um, transporting Mr. Brooks to the Mosquito Police Department. Okay. So at this point, Mr. Brooks is in custody. Yes, ma'am. I don't consent to being called that day. Um, overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes, ma'am. And the person you were uh, asked to drive to the Muskego Police Department, do you see him in this courtroom here today? Yes, ma'am. Would you identify him, please, and uh, if Mr. Brooks would please remove his mask, Your Honor? Objection. I, I don't consent sir, to be called that name. Oh, thank you. You were. Um, go ahead. It's the black male sitting at the table with a black suit and the mask that he just put back on. Where did you first meet? Oh, hold on. The record should reflect he did point to the defense table, and the record will reflect he identified him. Go ahead. Okay. Where did you first meet Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Uh, the Waukesha Memorial Hospital, the police hold room. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you um, repeat that? Mr. Brooks was talking over you. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Go ahead, sir at the Waukesha Memorial Hospital in the police hold room. All right, and where were you going to take him? To the Muskego Police Department. Why? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, Detective Carpenter said that he was going to be there um, so that he can question him sometime in the near future. Is the Muskego Police Department located in the city of Waukesha? <coughs> no, ma'am. Relevancy. Overruled, he may answer. No, ma'am. Why did you take him back to your police department? Objection. Overruled. You may answer. At the time, we were at the annex, which is our older police department. Our um, police department that we usually report of report out of was being renovated, so we didn't have any holdings. So. Okay. And uh, to your knowledge, does the Muskego Police Department have a holding cell at their facility? Objection. Overruled. You may you may answer. Yes, ma'am. And they were willing to uh, house Mr. Brooks there under mutual aid? Objection. I don't consent to being called that day. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes, ma'am. So you put him in your squad car? Yes, ma'am. All right. Tell us about that. Your drive. <coughs> Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. So I put Mr. Brooks in my squad car. Um, we left the hospital around, I took custody of him around 12, 18 a.m. Um, we typed in my GPS to the Muskego Police Department. Um, we left the hospital. We had to go eastbound in Wisconsin, which is a road that's parallel to Main Street where the parade was taking place. Okay. Um, once we passed the, uh, while going eastbound in Wisconsin, there was multiple uh, marked squad cars so they're with their emergency lights on. Do you know what they were doing? Uh, Rather than see. Overruled, you may answer, sir. They were blocking traffic, uh, investigating. Um, 
an incident that transpired earlier that, that evening. Okay. Is it just, <coughs> excuse me, is it just you and Mr. Brooks in the squad car? Jay Shannon can sent to me and called their name. Overruled to my answer. Yes, it was just me and Daryl Brooks in the, the squad car. Okay. Jay Shannon can sent to me and called their name. Overruled. And as you traveled uh, in the area of Wisconsin Avenue, did Mr. Brooks make any statements? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, overruled. You may answer, sir. <laughs> yes, Mr. Brooks said uh, when, once we were going to Spawn, Wisconsin, um, and I quote, he said, uh, damn, it looks like they were dealing with something heavy. Okay. Did you reply to him in any way? No. Did he continue to speak? Yes, ma'am. What else did he say? He asked me if there was a basketball game going on or something tonight, and to which I replied, I'm not sure. Okay. Did you continue on uh, transporting him to the Muskego Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And uh, at some point, were you responsible for watching over him at the Muskego Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Relevancy. Overruled. Your answer may stand. Go ahead and um, just wait until I rule on the objections, okay, I'm sorry. please. That's okay. How long did you watch him for? Objection, rather busy. Overruled. I believe we got to the jail around closer to 1 a.m. Um, I watched him up until about 7 a.m. What kinds of things do you remember he did overnight? Objection, rather busy. Overruled, he may answer. I know that he was fed around 2 a.m. Um, he slept most of the night. Uh, he got up around 5 a.m., asked for water. I got him water. Um, and he asked to make a phone call to his daughter. Okay. Did you allow that? No. Did, uh, you said it appeared he was sleeping throughout most of the night? That's what I hearsay. Um, overall. Did Eddie? you answer? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Go ahead. All right. Uh, other than asking to call his daughter, did he make any other statements to you that you can recall? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, you may answer. I remember he made some complaints that the room was too bright and he wanted me to dim the room. Um, yeah, that's all that I remember he Okay. Saying. Like the lights in the room were too bright? Correct, in the cell, holding cell. Did you turn off the lights for him? No. Objection, leading. Overruled, his answer may stand. And, uh, were you relieved by another officer then later that morning? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. Hey, Cross. Yep. That's a yes? Yeah. Go ahead. You said that you recall uh, checking every 30 minutes on uh, doing like uh, well-being checks, right? That's correct. And how do you know for sure that the suspect was asleep? I don't know for sure if you were sleeping. I know that the cover was over your head um, and I would, every time I go and check in on you, um, I can see that your chest was rising up and down from underneath the blanket. So. It's a possibility that you were sleeping, it's a possibility that you weren't. I know that you're undercover, so it appeared that you were asleep most of the night. So it'd be fair to say you're not sure. It, answer stands, Your Honor, it's asked an answer. Objection. Um, overruled, he may answer. Could have been sleep, you probably, probably was sleep, you probably wasn't, but the blank was over your head most of the night. And do you recall why the suspect was not allowed a phone call? I was told that uh, you had to wait for a detective, Jay Carpenter, to talk to you. Uh, do you know if that's standard practice? Not sure if it's standard practice or not, but just following his instruction as if because he was going to be doing some investigation. Would you, would you say it's fair to say that usually the suspect being detained is allowed a phone call at some point? Relevance. 
Grouse. Relevant, sir? Grouse. No. <clears throat> why do you believe it's relevant? Um, why would why would the uh, contact to the outside world be restricted? All right, it's uh, I'll rule that it's not relevant. Sustain the objection. Next question. time you got to I think it was you said the hospital to pick up the suspect yes I left at 12 12 10 I got to the hospital around 12 18 to the best of your recollection do you recall being given uh, any information at that time about uh, the suspect being questioned? I don't recall if I was getting information on you being questioned at that time. to a police hold room inside of the hospital? That's correct. So it's not it's not unusual for someone to be detained in the police hold room inside of the hospital. That's correct. There's an active investigation going on. So would that be the only time if during an active investigation? Usually that we someone from the outside coming to the police hold room yes for an active investigation. And do you recall where in the hospital this police hold room is located? In the hospital? Do you recall where in the hospital is located? It's usually by the where the police officers park their vehicles through the ambulance bay, uh, straight ahead, and it's the second to last door on the right. To the best of your knowledge, do you know if those police hold rooms have cameras? I'm not sure. Before that particular incident, had you ever been in the police hall room in that hospital? Yep. Yes, sorry. stated that detectives informed you that they would need to speak with the detainee before any phone calls would be made. That's correct. To the best of your recollection, did they explain why to you? Grounds. Calls for speculation. Grounds. I'm sorry, calls for hearsay. Grounds. And speculation. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter, yep. sir? Then it's hearsay and it's. <coughs> Uh, 
and the detainee was turned over to an officer pulsing after um I'm, I'm guessing at the end of your shift that's correct Do you recall if the cell the detainee was uh, sleeping in that night had cameras? I'm not sure. Do you recall who did the booking process at the Muskego Police Department? Yes, I believe it was Lieutenant Andrika and um, Officer Klink of the Muskego Police Department. To the best, to the best of your recollection, do you recall why one of those officers weren't uh, doing the well-being checks? Because you were in our custody. Do you recall when you did your report, the date of it? <coughs> I don't recall the exact day I did my report. Was it that same evening or was it sometime after? When you say the same evening, what, what day are you the talking same, the same evening, The same evening or morning that you ended up having to do the well-being checks at the Muskego Police Department. I don't recall if I did it that day, but it most definitely was done shortly after. Shortly after, meaning a few days or a week or so? A few days. You don't recall if it was the 29th of November of 2021? I don't recall. When you were dispatched to the Walkershaw Memorial Hospital, did you observe any FBI agents at the scene? At the scene of the hospital? Yes. No. So to the best of your recollection, it was only the two detectives that you made contact with? <coughs> yes.
can you explain what the mobile audio video recording system is? Is um, it's an in squad camera that records um, outside of the squad car, so like in front of the squad car in the prisoner compartment, and it's a microphone that we um, put to our our vest or our, on our person uh, to record audio statements. So it records and it is it's video and audio. Correct. Did it record the detainee during your transport? Yes, it did. Besides the statements that you made reference to, did you observe or hear anything other than those statements? What do you mean? Can you clarify that for me? <clears throat> did you observe anything strange or while the recording was taking place? I don't know what you mean by strange. Like, did you notice any strange movements by the detainee? Anything that would alarm you in any way? Nothing that would alarm me, no. Did you know the extent of the invest investigation at the time you were dispatched to Waukesha Memorial? No, my only task was to transport you to receive a police department. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Go ahead and call your next witness, then, please. Call Detective Jay Carpenter. Good afternoon, Detective Carpenter. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right. It is up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. <clears throat> the first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Sure. My name is Detective Jay Carpenter. First name spelled J A Y, last name spelled C A R P E N T E R. Go ahead. Sir, how are you employed? I am employed as a detective with the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you been in law enforcement? 18 years. Have all those years been with the City of Waukesha Police Department? Yes. How long have you been detective? Almost five years. Direct your attention to November 21st of last year 
Were you working on that day? Yes, I was. Were you working the parade? <clears throat> I had actually been part of the parade. I marched in the parade as part of our Iron Guard unit and had completed my duty before the incident commenced. Okay. So this is the City of Waukesha annual holiday parade? Correct. Okay. And you say that you, after you finished the parade route, what, where did you go? So I went back to the City of Waukesha Police Department after I completed my part of the parade. And did you receive information while you're at the City of Waukesha Police Department regarding something that had happened at the parade? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. I did. Um, I changed out of my Honor Guard uniform and I was confronted by Officer Daniel Malo. He was working as a desk officer for the department that day. Um, officer Malo explained that a vehicle had driven through the parade route down in downtown Waukesha, um, that there were approximately 30 to 40 people down. Uh, many severely injured, some possibly deceased, um, and that there was also an officer involved, mm -hmm. shooting involved in the whole event. What did you do as a result of receiving that information? Uh, at that point, I went on duty and began heading towards the um, downtown area. Where did you go specifically? So when I when I headed out, um, there was a lot of there was a lot of radio traffic. It was uh, very chaotic, very confusing. Um, it was certainly like nothing I've ever experienced before as far as um, the radio traffic. Um, the event kind of began to mold into two different forms at that point in that uh, there were numerous officers calling for ambulances in the downtown area for the injured, but dispatch was also beginning to provide information that there was an inner individual in the area of the 500 block of Elizabeth Street, which is about a well, quarter of a mile off the parade route um, that was loitering and it was believed that may be the suspect so I headed in that direction. Now prior to heading in that direction did you have any information as to why this person in that area would be a suspect? Objection leading. Um, overruled. He may answer. Uh, yes, ma'am. A description had been provided of a possible suspect and the descriptions being provided by the dis dispatch of the, the individual now in this area were um, comparable, nearly identical to the descriptions I was hearing of the driver from the parade incident. What did you do then? As I was um, searching the area, I um, heard over the police radio that officers from a separate jurisdiction he had come in contact with the suspect and that he was in custody. Um, I proceeded over to Elizabeth Street where the suspect who was identified in the investigation as Daryl Brooks was already in custody. Okay. Now you stated that the information that you initially received with regard to the person involved's physical description, um, do you recall what that was? Objection leading. <clears throat> Um, overall, uh, information that I heard over police radio was uh, an African American male, blue jeans, and a red T-shirt. So, what did you do after receiving this information about um, a potential person in custody? Um, I responded to the immediate area. Um, Mr. Brooks, at that point, was already in custody. Um, I don't recall if he was outside a squad being searched, but he was handcuffed. Um, and already effectively in custody at that point. He was uh, placed in the rear of a city walk shop police car um, where he was um, taken into custody for loitering as well as being a suspect at that point um, as the operator of the vehicle that went through the parade route. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Overruled, your answer stands. Go ahead, next question. At the time that you made contact with this individual, did you have any information about the, the vehicle that had been used during the parade? Objection leading. Overruled. <coughs> yes, a red SUV. Uh, that was actually a, a red Ford Escape, specifically. And did you have any information if that car had been located at the time that you went to the Elizabeth Street address? Yes, it had already been located. Did you have any information about that red SUV prior to going to Elizabeth Street? Objection. Overruled. 
the information I recall having is that the vehicle was uh, parked over on Maple Avenue, which is about two and a half to three blocks west of Elizabeth Street, where Mr. Brooks was located and taken into custody. Okay. Objection on consent to being caught that night. Overruled. Did you have the opportunity to speak with an individual who was identified as Daryl Brooks Objection at that Elizabeth on Street address? To that night. <clears throat> Go ahead, you may answer. I don't believe I spoke with him at that address, but Mr. Brooks was transported to our substation located on Les Paul Parkway in the city of Waukesha, where I had opportunity to speak with him. Did you see him at the Elizabeth Street address? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you see him in the court today? I do. Uh, I'd ask the court to ask Mr. Brooks to remove his mask. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Can you identify him by where he's seated and what he's wearing? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Brooks is seated to my left, uh, wearing a dark-colored suit jacket, multicolored tie, surgical mask on his face, shaved head, um, and he did have a beard at the time he took his mask off. Let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. It will reflect. Thank you. <clears throat> Sir, as you see Mr. Brooks today, does he look different than he did on November 21st of last year? Objection. Well, let me see. Well, Yes, ma'am. How? Objection. Leading. Overruled. At the time of the um, at the time of the incident, Mr. Brooks had longer hair, uh, a braided style hair that probably went midway down his back. How about facial wise? Uh, he had a beard at that time, but it's a little bit shorter now. It was a little bit thicker and longer at the time. So you stated that. Um, the defendant was transported to a substation? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. And do you recall who transported him? Uh, Specialist Mark Howard. Did you follow Specialist Howard to the substation? Yes, I did. Upon either, should I say, at the scene, did you obtain items that were located on the defendant's person? Yes, I did. What did they consist of? So the items I received that were on Mr. Brooks' person at the time of his arrest, there were several items. One of them was a Wisconsin photo identification card. So it had a picture on the ID card that I recognized as being Mr. Brooks based on the fact I was with him at this time. Um, the name on that identification <coughs> card was Daryl Edward Brooks Jr., his date of birth being February 21st, 1982. There was also a Wisconsin Green Wisconsin Quest card with Mr. Brooks's name on it, a silver American Express debit or credit card with Mr. Brooks's name on it, two Visa debit cards, one black, one white, both which had Mr. Brooks's name on it, and then there was a Georgia EBT card which had uh, the name of Mr. Brooks's girlfriend on it. Other than any the identifying information that you just testified to, is anything else turned over to you? Um, that was removed from Daryl Brooks. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name and he's leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am. There was $4 cash, but also a Ford ignition key. Now, you say that there was a suspect vehicle that had been located? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any information prior to your discussions with the defendant about who the owner of that vehicle was. Objection. The Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I did. And who was the owner of that vehicle? A female by the name of Dawn Woods. And do you recall what her address was? Objection. <clears throat> Overruled. The witness may answer. 4014 North 19th Street in the city of Milwaukee. So 19th Street, you said? Yes, ma'am. Objection. Leading witness. Overruled. The answer may stand. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 172 um, that's going to appear on the screen in front of you. Uh, before we do that, uh, these identifiers that you located for Daryl Brooks, did you um, take a picture of <coughs> Yes, ma'am. I don't consent to being called that name for the hundredth time. Overruled. And let me know when you see something in your I screen. see it. Okay. Um, do you recognize these items as those items you just described as having been removed from the defendant's person? Yes, I do. Okay. I'd ask the court to um, admit um, this exhibit into evidence and to publish it for the jury. Objection. Relevancy. 
Objection is overruled. Exhibit 172 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Okay. Um, if you can specifically zoom in on the Wisconsin ID card. Uh -huh. um, the address on that Wisconsin identification card, is that the same address that you recited for Don Woods? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, ma'am, it is. And what was the date that that card was issued? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. June 14th, 2021. And the picture on the identification card, would that be consistent or inconsistent with what the defendant looked like on November 21st of last year? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. It's almost exactly what he looks like. Now, as you were at the substation, what did you do that can be removed? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, for the most part, what we were doing down there is obtaining basic booking information. So I, I, con I confirmed Mr. Brooks' first name, middle name, um, last name, date of birth. I obtained an emergency contact for him, uh, phone numbers, um, whether he was working or not, going to school, um, obtained information about his tattoos, piercings, things of that nature. Personal, personal identification information. Okay. And who did he say his emergency contact was? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. Mr. Brooks indicated his emergency contact person was Don Woods. And what relationship was Don Woods to him? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. It is Mr. Brooks' mother. Okay. And did you subsequently obtain a phone number for Don Woods? I did. Objection and relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. What is that phone number, if you recall? Objection and relevancy. 414-610-2153. Now, when you asked the defendant for his name, what did he tell you his name was? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. I believe he indicated it was Darrell, D-A-R-R-E-L-L, -L, which... Um, and speaking with him, and I can confirm seeing him today, um, Darrell Brooks or Daryl Brooks are one and the same. They are the same person. Did you become aware of any <coughs> video evidence um, that was collected in the downtown area during the parade capturing a picture of the person who drove the red SUV through the parade. Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, ma'am, I did. And you said you saw that? Yes, I did. I'm gonna ask that exhibit 120, which has been previously admitted to evidence be published for the jury. Go ahead. Is that the photographic evidence that you just testified to? Objection. Overruled. Yes, ma'am, it is. And do you recall approximately was this um, the car being driven while the parade, in the midst of the parade, after the parade, or before the parade, if you know? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. So the photo we're looking at right here is right in the middle of the parade. So right now, the vehicle is within the parade route while the parade is ongoing. And were you able to positively identify the driver of that vehicle? Objection. Yes, ma'am, I was. Overruled. Who is the driver of that vehicle? The driver of the vehicle is Daryl Brooks. Thank you. Approximately how long... Um, you don't this exhibit? I am, yes. Thank you. How long were you at the substation? Probably about two to two and a half hours. <clears throat> Why were you there versus anywhere else? So at this particular time, the department was in a transition. Um, our original building was under construction. 
Um, the building we were primarily working out of did not have a booking room, did not have a place to uh, to take prisoners, so we had to go down to the substation instead of our, our own actual police department. Other than collecting the information that you had previously um, told us about, including emergency contact information, name, things like that, what else were you doing at the substation? Objection, meeting. Overruled the witness and answer. Uh, mainly at that time, just waiting for further information as to, to what was going to be done next. Like I say, the scene was um, very, very chaotic. Um, I know there were there were so many victims out there, they didn't even have enough ambulances to transport them all. Um, so officers, it took, I feel like, probably hours to really get it under control. Um, so I was just waiting on more information from um, Detective Casey, who had been assigned as lead, to determine what steps would be appropriate next. Um, as just being there with Mr. Brooks and, and making sure he was safe and remained in custody, I, I didn't have a real good idea due to the chaos of what was going on away from where I was. Now you had testified about some of the property that was recovered from the defendant, um, and you stated that one of the items was a card in the name of Erica Patterson. Do you recall that? Objection. He did not say who was in the name of. Sustained. Please um, rephrase. Actually, if we can pull up exhibit 172 again. Objection. Hearsay. <laughs> There's no question yet, but. And if you so, can oh. zoom in on the Georgia EBT card. Whose name is on that card? Erica Patterson. Lady. Over room. Go ahead, you can answer that again. Erica Patterson. Did you, at the time that you were at the substation, have any information regarding an Erica Patterson and her relationship to Daryl Brooks? Objection that I don't consent to being called their name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Objection is hearsay. Overruled. Not at that time, no. Okay. Did you later learn of a relationship between the defendant and Erica Patterson? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I did. And what was that relationship? Objection leading. <clears throat> Overruled. Uh, Ms. Patterson was a <laughs> significant other or girlfriend to Mr. Brooks and mother of one of his children. Objection, not girlfriend. Overruled. The jury will disregard that last <clears throat> statement as Mr. Brooks is not testifying at the moment. Well, keep it true. Now, when you make contact with Daryl Brooks, at, or while you're making contact with Daryl Brooks at the substation, did he complain of any injuries? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. The you prosecution may is trying to be funny at this point. Yes, ma'am, he did. He well, I didn't hear the last thing, but I believe it was commentary. So just state your objection, and I'll rule on it. It's been overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am, he did. He complained of two injuries, one to his knee, but primarily and mostly of an injury to what was his right shoulder. Did he say how that occurred? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he did. Mr. Brooks told us that his shoulder was injured when he was arrested, indicating the arresting officers slammed him to the ground. Did you have the opportunity at any point in this investigation to review body camera footage um, from Officer Rebecca Carpenter? Yes, ma'am. And that was at the, the residence where the defendant was taken into custody? Yes, ma'am, it was. Did you see any um, unlawful use of force on the defendant during that time? Objection. You're safe. Overruled. The witness may answer. No, ma'am. In fact, there was no force used at all. Mr. Brooks was given um, verbal directions by officers to get down onto the ground, and he did so entirely on his own power. Based upon his complaints, however, was the decision made to transport him um, for medical clearance? Yes, ma'am. And where did you transport the defendant? Um, Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Do you know approximately what time you arrived there? 
I believe, I don't remember the exact time, it was sometime, I believe it was between about 8 and 9 p.m. Upon entering, did, who was with you and Mr. Brooks? Objection, I don't consent to being called a name is leading the witness. Um, overruled as to both, you may answer. Detective Ben Stern. Okay. Was he partnering with you in this part of the investigation? Yes, ma'am, he was. Okay. And when you entered the hospital, what observations, if any, did you make? Um, entering the hospital, we, we escorted um, Mr. Brooks, you know, to a room so that he could um, receive medical clearance. Uh, I know there were some individuals from the parade that were injured in nearby rooms. I didn't really see many of them, but I knew they were close by. Um, so we escorted Mr. Brooks into a room, trying to keep away from the victim so as to not uh, make the incident any more tension-filled than it already was. How busy was it at the hospital when you brought Mr. Brooks in? Objection leading. Oh, overruled, the witness may answer. Um, extremely. There were, there were victims, due to the mass amount of casualties, many of which you know, survived but still needed extensive medical attention, um, it was very busy. Many of the victims were, were taken to alternate hospitals because Waukesha Memorial could not handle the, the amount of patients that were coming in. Now, approximately how long did you spend with Mr. Brooks at Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Objection, I was consent to being called to Overruled. Probably about four hours. Is that addition to the time that you would have spent with him at the substation? Yes, ma'am. Leading. Overruled. What was his demeanor? Um, extremely calm. If I could... I would describe it, I guess, to put it in context for the court, very similar to mine right now. Um, the conversations I had with him, um, as far as getting his identification info and, and such, he, he talked to me as calmly as I'm speaking now. Um, based on his body language, his tone of voice, his attitude, um, you'd have never known he had done something or was in custody for having done something so serious. Did he ask you why he was in custody um, at the substation? Yes. And what did you tell him? At that point, I simply told Mr. Brooks it was a loitering investigation and possible disorderly conduct. Now, you just testified that he was a suspect in the parade mass casual casualty incident. Why didn't you tell him that? Um, at that time, I didn't want to make Mr. Brooks, one, overly anxious. Um, Two, there was a lot of information initially I, I still didn't know. Um, it was initially, you know, as part of the chaos, I believe at one point we were actually looking for as many as four, as four people. So I didn't know how deeply he was or was not involved. It was believed that um, and known that he was somehow involved and knew something. So before I even addressed those issues, one, I wanted to make sure I knew all the facts and had as much information as I could. Um, more than anything for the integrity of the case. When you talk about the integrity of the case um, and your discussions with him, did the defendant appear to know what was going on around him? When I say that, I guess, was he aware of where he was, who you were, things like that? Objection speculative. Um, as to the way it was rephrased in the second half of that, I will allow it. You may answer. Yes, yes he did. He seemed, uh, he was alert. His, when asked questions like, for example, his about phone number, his emergency contact, the answers were consistent with the question asked. He did not have slurred speech. He did not show any signs of being under the influence or in mental crisis. Did your opinion change at any time while you were with him on November 21st? Objection, vague. Overruled, he may answer. No, it did not. Now, during the four hours that you were at the hospital, were you, um, did he continue to complain about shoulder pain? Yes, he did. Were his actions always consistent with his expression of the pain in the shoulder? Objection, speculative. 
Um, <coughs> you know, you may answer. No, they were not. Can you describe for the jury what you mean by that? Objection. Speculative. <coughs> how, how can he know how somebody's body is feeling? Um, <coughs> overruled, he may answer, given as long as he answers with his understanding. Or, uh, what Observations is what I Observation. Thank you. I think that's what you said. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Brooks, when he, he would speak to me throughout um, the evening, he would move his arms about, he'd put them out to his side, he'd move them back and forth, he'd raise them up and down. Um, he was talking about being in severe pain, but I would describe the way he'd move his arms and such as, as basic body mannerisms um, and basic interpersonal interactions. He, his hands, his arms, everything moved completely normally when we would speak. Um, there was no favoring of that shoulder or anything to indicate other than what he was saying through physical action that there was any type of injury there that I observed. Now at some point, I strike that. During this time that you were with him and he was getting medically cleared, first of all, did he get medically cleared? Yes, he did. He didn't need to be... Oh, hold on. Overrule, oh, his answer may stand. Do you need any treatment while at the hospital? No, he was checked out. The doctor came in and looked at his shoulder. I do not believe any medications were given. There may have been, I believe they took an x-ray to check it, but he was ultimately cleared and turned over to police custody. And during the time that you were with him while he was getting medically cleared, what type of conversation were you having? Was it a general conversation or were you talking to him about the, um, the loitering? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. The conversation was was general. Uh, Mr. Brooks asked several times if I would give him more information as to why he was in custody, and I would continue to tell him it was for the loitering violation. But the conversations were mostly we talked about sports. Um, the Green Bay Packers had played that day. We talked about the game. He, I remember him telling me that baseball was his favorite sport. Um, and things of that nature. He was upset that the Packers had lost the game. So it was basically, it was general conversation not related to why he was specifically in custody. At some point, did you decide that you were going to try to talk to the defendant about um, at least the loitering incident? Yes, ma'am, I did. Do you know approximately what time that took place? 11.04 p.m. And how did you approach this interview? You've now been with Mr. Brooks for um, maybe five hours, would that be fair? Yes. How did you decide to approach this interview with him? Objection leading. Um, overruled the witness may answer. I just explained to Mr. Brooks that I simply wanted to speak with him about uh, why he was in the neighborhood where he was discovered that night, what was going on. Um, what led to him being there, um, and that I was just looking to have answers to that if he was willing to provide them. Okay. And did you, was Mr. Brooks <coughs> in a room that uh, had the ability to record the conversation that you had with him? Objection, I don't consent to be in court on that. Overruled, you may answer. No, not. Not in the manner we would if we were at our typical police department. So our police department would have a, a camera mounted in the corner that would record audio and video. They did have a security camera, but it had no audio capability. So what did you do? I utilized uh, my department-issued phone and um, recorded the audio of the interview that way. So you had the audio on your phone and the visual, or there was a visual recording, is that true? Yes, yeah, so the audio was on my phone and then the visual recording was through the hospital security system. Bless you. So they didn't, they didn't marry up with one another, correct? I no. mean, in terms of, I should strike that. Um, you couldn't play the audio with the visual. There are two different recordings. Yes. Okay. Who else was with you during this interview? At that time, Detective Ben Stern from my department was with me, <coughs> as well as two federal agents from the FBI, 
Agent Mary Davidson and J Agent Jeremy, I believe it's Pilachowski. Why were they there? So the FBI came involved in the investigation early on because we were not certain at that point whether or not this was a uh, terrorist incident. So how did it work? Were they in the room and then Mr. Brooks was brought into the room or how did that work? Objection, I don't consent to me and call that name and is leading the witness. Um. Over the list, so the name sustained us to the form of the question. How did you all get into the same room? So I was in the room waiting for Mr. Brooks. Mr. Brooks was brought from another room by Detective Stern. At this point, the audio recording on my phone was already running. <coughs> um, I believe the two FBI agents were with me in the room and then like I say, Mr. Brooks was escorted in by uh, Detective Stern. Did you introduce yourselves? Well, you had been with Mr. Brooks previously, pre correct? Objection. Yes, I had. Um, overruled, he may answer. Yes, I had. Okay. Had he been introduced to Detective Stern already? Yes, he had. Okay. And how about the two FBI agents? It was at that point that they introduced um, themselves to Mr. Brooks. What was his reaction to that when they introduced themselves? Objection, Brother Missy. Oh, you may answer. I'm very surprised. He um, he said the word FBI, you know, in the form of a question. I could tell his tone was very surprised. It wasn't as calm as he had been. He seemed concerned, uneasy, and. Um, Within about a minute after stating that, he questioned the agents further as to whether they were really FBI agents, and you know, he was surprised to see them there, and he had never actually seen an FBI agent before, so he was definitely surprised, and I could tell he was uncomfortable. Did you record the entire conversation you had with the defendant? Yes. The, um, at that point, all that is on recording. The, the, at that point, yes. And have you had the opportunity to review that recording prior to today, to today's date? I have. Um, I would like to um, admit Exhibit 81 for the court. It is the audio interview of the defendant that took place on November 21st, 2021. It's previously been addressed by this court. Objection. Um, remind me how long it is again. Um, Your Honor, the entire video is 25 minutes approximately. I'm asking to play from 4 minutes and 25 seconds to 14 minutes and 25 seconds approximately. Well, it would be 10 minutes. Um, I presume you'll have questions regarding that once you play it? Correct. All right. Uh, given that it's just before 5 o'clock, I'm going to stop for the day. We can pick up with this uh, tomorrow. Um, you can uh, sit down for the moment, and I will have our instruction for the jurors. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do not begin your deliberations and discussion of this case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations, excuse me, in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses, do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, 
or any other electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have the opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics applications or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by any other means. If anyone does so despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home in the evening to discuss this case with another member of your household, but you may not do so. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in the courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After the trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. If any juror has reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, you are excused for the evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All rise for the jurors, please. Printing out a draft of preliminary, you can be seated, jury instruction, sorry, in jury instruction 60, which concerns use of an interpreter for a witness. I have a question about that second paragraph, which relates to whether the witness knows some English or not. And so we'll review that uh, tomorrow morning first thing, um, but it'll be provided to the party. So you have that to look at um, this evening. Um, with that, I'll see everyone tomorrow at 8.30. Thank you.